Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn operators in JavaScript. So operators are many things are there which are prepared independent operators, specific lectures where it is required in this section. So the operators would be called it will be plays a major role while defining decisions and comparing the things and logically we need to apply our logical brain to making in a decisions to which to be go in like a next step or to be future step like a back step to be decided using these operators so let's categorizing these operators of arithmetic assignment comparison logical so here we are going to seeing like arithmetic operators plus minus multiplication division and uh, incrementing and decrement also we are going to cover in this lecture so let's see very simply i'll take like a uh, variables over here using let a equal to some tradi and uh, let b equal to some number 30 so how it is defined let c equal to or let tot is called as total as a variable equal to a plus b terminate so tot is a variable is going to be storing a data of sum of two numbers a b so this total is going to be assigning this particular javascript element so let's see all you know that this element is nothing but this paragraph id we are going to sing an output the save it and run so the 50 we are getting here very successfully so how simple it is we are getting if i am my number is changed something like a 40 save it reload some 60 you will get automatically the arithmetic operation is happening inside while compilation of the program so how simple it is let's say let's say subtraction let's minus if i put here instead of plus here so save it and run so minus 20 why because this is the value is uh, lower than that so if i put 60 to the above save it and reload it's a 60 it is getting really awesome so the similarly we may apply like uh, you may think it like uh, division yes save it and run 1.5 and similarly if you want to like uh, make it uh, multiplication is done yes multiplication if you want to make it I'll make it small numbers then we'll see the multiplication uh, so the multiplication symbol it's a star save it run it 24 how great it is and now if the power value if we want to see how it is possible making uh, like uh, into into that's it so let's see if I take like uh, let's uh, a only it is there assume it a only it is there assume it uh, like um, the variable which is a uh, a yeah my to the power of 2 save it reload 36 so the power we will use without spacing without spacing we may use star star and a uh, space and a 2 so there is a no space between these two stars means it is a power value so a to the power of 2 so what is the a value it is a 6 6 6 jar 36 so you are seeing like a, this value is an output so the same way we'll see for a like a plus plus operators let's say very simply plus plus operators let a equal to 6 over here and uh, next to that line if I write a plus plus terminate what would be the a value over here what would be the a value just remove here yes let's check the a value reload so the a value is incrementing by plus one see a plus plus is nothing but it's a post increment after the a is loaded here here it is the a value is incrementing by plus one then what happening the value of a is going to be printing assigning here and it's a printing it's a seven so let's see these operators very helpful 
while using loop statements. It's a post increment operator a plus plus I'm used. Mostly we can use i plus plus the same way. It's a a plus plus the variable I have changed uh, changed the name of uh, x like uh, a. So the similarly minus minus operator. It's a decrement. So let's check with the decrement also. Save it and run. It's a five. One value plus one is a value is a minus. It's going to be it's a plus plus means it's incrementing the value by one. Minus minus it is incrementing the value by one. So if you donated before after where you are placing this operator, it will be treated pre increment, post increment, pre decrement, post decrement. This will be you will observe while you are writing more and more programming languages. All right, and JavaScript is also follows PODMAS rules or BODMAS bracket of multiplication, division, and subtraction. So the same thing is applied here also. For this, you test yourself by writing many of exercises. So let's see, let A, what would be the output, we'll see now, save it, we'll get the 250, okay, where it is applicable the BODMAS or PODMAS rules will be same will follow in JavaScript program. Let's try to explore more examples using different different parameters, whichever you require here, place it and test yourself. Directly you may write arithmetic operators. I'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn assignment operators. So let's simply this lecture is uh, making a very simplification of this lecture. Let's see. First, I'll explain you what is assignment operator. So the assignment operator will help us to know very easily this equal to will be called as assignment operator. Very simple. So this operator using we are uh, assigning data items and data values to a variable. Clear? Now let's see. With the help of assignment operator, how we are going to adding values to a particular variable. Keep on adding the things maybe happens. Let's see how it is possible. Let a, let a equal to 10 means we are going to assigning a value of 10 to the a variable. So if I see the output, we are getting 10 as an output like value, data value. So this is the code part area, like area, this is the editor we are seeing like output, the browser. Most of the persons who knows like from the beginning who are observing the lectures. Clear? Now let's see. If I am keep on adding more 5 or numbers, anything. A plus C equal to some number like uh, from more 4 I am adding. Let's see what happens. Plus equal to is also as an, uh, like an addition of uh, assignment operator. Plus equal to. So let's see what happens now. Reload. 14 it is loading. How simply it is. If I am adding num like number like uh, 8 or something. 18 it would be. So this assignment operator will automatically add the values to the existing variable value. Similarly, the operator subtractor is also there. Subtraction. So the minus, save it, reload, 2 we are getting. So that subtraction is happening from the already existing value which is already available inside the variable. Similarly, we have in a more options of the multiplication. Yes, instead of star, we need to remove, like instead of a hyphen, we need to remove and put the star mark and reload the page, 80, 8 tens are 80. So the existing variable, it's place. This is also assignment operator and division. Yes, it's also applicable. Yes, greatly we are using. And uh, more, if you need more exploring the operators of the 
uh, arithmetic operators to making as an assignment operator you may try yourself all right we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to learn comparison operators in javascript so what are the comparison operators why we require to use these comparison operators in programming language so here when we like uh, many times we need to compare the data to one to another data then only we will make the decisions if the data is possibly is coming in a proper way or not then only we'll understand in dynamic way see some example like a uh, few of the applications are only eligible for female or few of the applications may be eligible for only male in such a criteria we may put whether it is a male or female application we need to test in our application in coding so how it is possible using this comparison operators highly it is important and easy to compare the things and strongly remember while comparing the things you need to sometimes you may compare with the data sometime you need to compare with the data type as well these both are different data which is matching and data type may be different so most of the examples like uh, equal to equal to operator type comparison less than greater than not equal to these are the components we'll try to apply one by one over here let's start here the session with a simple equal to comparison okay let i am taking a equal to 10 let continue with the same example so here i may put here my simple functionality with a uh, like a comparing with the a equal to equal to 10 a equal to equal to 10 what happens now let's check it so run this true see the variable value which is going to be equal to equal to 10 here it is an assigned value if i am changing 10 to some around 9 save it reload false so the expression is making while comparing with the value with the variable it is throwing true or false boolean expression i am requesting from the particular javascript program so here the comparison is making now let's see very simple a very very simple uh, what i'll try to do a equal to 10 while we have seen the true correct let's check true so if i am putting a equal to equal to equal to 3 equals yes it is true why it's a specifically it is a data type also it will be verifies this operator okay this operators will check with the data as well as its type what is the data type it is so let's see if i am putting surrounding some single or double quotes now let's run before we have gone the result it's not true now save it and reload now it is false why its type is not matching here it is in a string we are comparing with the number 10 so it is false so if i put here also in a string variable save it run it again will get true why because string to string is matching so particularly this is also very highly essential important in real time program so strongly remember whenever you deal with the data with the numbers you are comparing and uh, either string or its data type also you may be check yourself all right now not equal to not symbol exclamatory mark will be treated here and not equal to 10 it will be it is a equal to 10 and here are we are comparing with the not equal to let's see what the result will come false if i changing the number something else as user input reload it's true which is not matching this value is not matching to here so we are getting the boolean expression of true okay so very easy these all operators you may apply very easily in your program okay so let's see 
um, I may put here called less than less than you may directly write the less than a less than 10 is it true or not reload yes it is true if it is greater than what it would be it would be false that's it a value is bigger this value is smaller if it is a less than means uh, left side part is lower and right side part is bigger so we are getting true false accordingly so with this without using space greater than or equal to less than or equal to also you may apply the conditions all right you may apply the conditions so if i put 10 now it is come become true it's become true maybe less than or greater than 10 10 means yes equal to whenever we are applying greater than or equal to less than or equal to the comparing with the two things one variable value with the one static value we are comparing these two things all right in this way you can prepare your comparison operators very greatly in your program next lecture will catch you with logical operators thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn logical operators in javascript so logical and logical or logical not these are very important to learn in programming language so the and symbol would be either and or and and we may write similarly or we can write or else two pipes we may write as an uh, like uh, two pipe symbols yeah straight lines we need to write or else and uh, another one we need to put like not operator logical not or uh, we may put not in multi so this way we can write the logical operators one by one let's see begin with the end operator logical end true 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 false 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 true these are the options are going to be apply while using logical operators if you need more information regarding this you may check with your uh, like um, operators which are logical operators you may check in your notebook all right now let's check with the end operator now let's begin a n t let a equal to 10 some value have taken and let b equal to something like uh, 5 i will take lower than that all right now how i'll apply end operator over here very simple we have seen like comparison operators earlier instead of comparison operator like uh, what is the operator yes let's say less than 10 a less than 10 let's see what happening here false it is coming so make sure to put like uh, um, make sure to put something I want to put something like a true so what happening here it's a false so I'll make it bigger value it will comes true now saving yes now it is true so how I can compare with this uh, second variable let's write let's write like uh, inside let's write inside uh, using and and y it's a b here b um, yeah less than or greater than less than or greater than you may put like a uh, 8 so 5 is lower value now yeah simple line yes we can see so now let's see what would be the statement you will get true why the true why the true you are getting if I am given this statement of number is 4, we will get like false. Yes, we are getting false. Why? See, very detailed explanation I will give you. A simple example explanation, you may take it. Later, it will be very easy for you to understand. Okay? So, the, this is the first statement we are writing here. Comparing with the two statements, with the two variables. So, the first one is a less than 20 yes it is a bigger number it is there for a value and 20 we are comparing so it is a statement is true clear 
and b it is a 8 it is given less than 8 so b is a 5 so two options are making two statements here and here two conditions are true so end operator what it will say when the two operators are like a two uh, conditions are true end is automatically give you in output it's a true so ultimately you are getting true so either one condition if it is false ultimately the result would be false this game like uh, these challenges will play using end operator okay see if any value if i am changing like either one condition if it is making false it is going through output ultimately it will give you a final result it is false okay so now and is over now or operator what happens let's check by making two pipelines save it and run it it's also saying true and if i am making four which is a once we applied in the end operator we have a get the result of false there so now what happens let's check reload it's a true only it's giving if i'm making uh, like a 10 both conditions are false then we'll get the false true what happens either any one condition if it is true ultimately the result would be true okay either any one condition is true ultimately the result would be true if both are false then only it false if both are true even it will be true so this is the or operator using or operator you may make a more possibilities you are not restricting strictly to true clear and very simple very very simple to apply not operator so the combinations you may write many you may write many combinations where not operator what happens just see like uh, this is the true statement we are able to see in logical operator with the r in front of this in front of this i am applying exclamatory mark means it is a not so when we are getting true result output whatever it the result may be true or false whatever it the result using logical end operator logical or operator irrespective to the operator so you are getting some result so what happens now applying not operator opposite result you will get if you are getting true with the logical operators operators maybe end or or if you are applying not operator it's quite opposite result you will get so with this result we are seeing true while applying negation of a not operator let's see i am saving the code and reloading the page so the false we are getting if I remove this not operator, save this, true, in either conditions of or, like uh, end operator or operate uh, or operator, whatever it may be the operator you may apply, while you are applying for the negation, you will get negative result, like uh, opposite result. How simple to understand this uh, logical operators. So need more practice need more practice to have a great experience while applying your own uh, programming logic implementations you will get more and more while uh, if else statements loop statements while applying of these all the operators all right all the lectures are how like uh, the basic lectures are going to be applying in the in front of lectures in the programming especially okay we'll go to the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn a very simple and initiating of a while loop statement by writing of the basic syntax and uh, how we are going to dealing while, while loop we are learning here. Why we require to use loop statements? Loop statements are used to execute same block of code again and again as long certain condition is true or certain condition is making true statement or false if it is a true a loop will continue if it is false loop will terminate 
So instead of writing repeated lines, instead of writing repeated lines, same code line statement will execute repeatedly. With the help of a loop statement, it is very highly possible. So let's see while loop like a, how the loop like a block of code is specified condition is true till the condition like a executing. Let's see with the syntax and uh, writing of a simple while loop statement. By defining, I'm, I'm taking a very simple like uh, uh, example of uh, a equal to 1 I am taking. So whenever you are trying to practicing this loop statement, you don't uh, hurriedly run the program. You just write it keenly understand then you run the program otherwise it will be making a new like a uh, infinity loop will create okay so let's see while syntax is while while is a reserved keyword all you need to understand those who are uh, like uh, reserved keywords are not going to be used as a variables so while is also reserved keyword and while we are putting something like uh, some condition while condition means dollar a less than are equal to also we may put like all the operators what we have learned we can apply here okay by making the condition anywhere in the program entire the course or entire the programs which you are going to be prepared or preparing for your like uh, implementations of the applications you need to apply for uh, all the operators okay if uh, dollar a variable I have taken so this is the variable dollar a implies one is the value is assigned is less than or equal to 10 means dollar a one i am assigned i am comparing with the value 10 means this the condition is true or false let's see dollar a is one less than or equal to 10 means it's it's absolutely true so the condition is true means once the condition is true then it will enter into the while loop so let's write while loop this is the block of code i am writing here okay if the condition is true it is going to be entering into the block of while loop block statement then the code which is written here it will be executes so what is my statement echo uh, the numbers will see what are the numbers are going to be printing uh, number on every run like on every like loop is iterating it's allowed around uh, 10 times so the number on every iteration we call it as loop will continue as a circle so this circle it is like a running movements are called as iterations okay so the number is uh, the number is um, we can simply say that dollar a i'm printing on every iteration then we will understand uh, what the number is going to be printing so breaking and terminate now don't run don't run if you run, uh, you will get uh, inserted like a uh, uh, infinity loop. So just wait. Now what I am trying to do, in, see if I run this, it will go why it's a infinity loop means while it will check with that a value, it is less than 10, it will print, again it will run and again it is one only now. So keep on runs, keep on runs. So what we need to do, I need to increment on every iteration of a value with plus 1 for that dollar a plus plus so here dollar a plus plus means post increment I have given means it will when the code is top to bottom all the programming languages most of the programming languages top to bottom will execute line by line this line once it is completed this line once it is completed this line in that way it will execute so here uh, like a uh, a less than or equal to 10 means dollar a value like a variable value it is true then it is printing a value here it is printing a value here means one is the a value by defaultly we are assigned about to the line number seven so it is printing here and the come to the next line when it is come to here a value is incrementing by plus one so now a value is 2 again once it is completed again what happens here it will go and compare the value with the a value 2 less than or equal to 10 yes it is true again it will print this statement means it is the a value is 2 
now again it will comes to here and uh, a value is incrementing by plus 1 means it's a 3 so on till reaching of 10 it will runs once it is a uh, 11 then the condition is failed then loop is terminates and it will exit from here so this statement is repeatedly printing again and again if I run this now save it and uh, run it yeah refresh the page of output which the page loops.php so the page localhost our project our page name okay so refresh it wow the number is one first iteration the number is two second iteration three third iteration four five six seven eight nine till ten when it is rich uh, like reached when it is reached 10 it is the loop will terminates the condition is failing no if it is 11 less than or equal to 10 means it's a false so the loop is terminating in that way loop statements are works try to very very simple example you take and practice yourself and here uh, what happening the initiating of uh, this value is by default 1 so again it is coming to printing 1 here it is going to be like making plus 1 so incrementing by 1 and so on it is running if I am placing 100 what happens I need not to do anything just 100 refresh 100 lines will print that's it loop is advantage is that one only how many lines you want to run the program you just add the number and check yourself so easy you have to practice more and more by understanding these levels okay so here 100 is there okay let it be 100 okay so here dollar a plus 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 1 i am given so it is a giving like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 10 numbers are coming here so if i want to if i want to increment a value with the plus 2 a plus equal to 2 a plus equal to 2 on every iteration a value is incrementing by plus 2 let's see see 1 by default it is entering into the loop it's a 1 again it is plus 2 it is incrementing 1 plus 2 it is 3 it is printing 3 plus 2 5 so on it will go if you want to like uh, increment by 10 save it and run it 1 11 21 31 41 51 this way the loop is going to be running i hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you Try to practice more examples using while loop and uh, you will get in a great idea how to run and how to execute the loop statements. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn if else elif like a three statements we are going to learning now if else we have seen from the previous two lectures now we are going to adding one more condition with if else if we are having to compare one more condition how it is possible if we want to compare one more condition how it is possible yes there is an a possibility is there for this hover we are going to comparing with one more condition like a good morning, good evening and a good day. Segregations we are doing now. Okay, let's see how the things are possible. So here uh, it's a 20 it is there, no? So we'll do like um, less than 10 we'll take it first. Okay. Uh, yes, if hover is there, no? H-O-U-R hover is less than 10. I would say like it's a good morning okay the construction of the program I'll remake it M-E-S-S-A-G message equal to message equal to um, good morning all right if our less than 10 it will says good morning so else if let's see else so we need to continue the previous statement this way that's it my problem statement is written writing is completed else if if it is uh, else if again I am verifying this condition straight away I am not sending to the else part that is the purpose we will create if 
else if else if you we are having more conditions you can continually write that else if else if else if else if blocks till how many levels you need you may write yourself all right so see the good morning and good day and good evening so now if i run this let's check if i run this it's a good day so the time is now it's now based on the time it will go or else or else you may put like a comment this line and uh, yeah we have to play more things no const that is equal to uh, maybe like uh, 11 i'll give it 11 manual hours i'm giving here oh sorry 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 const h o u r it's 11 okay so this variable value manually i'm given instead of using uh, system date time why because i need to check all the conditions specifically so this less than means uh, we need to give like a 8 we'll get like see save this and run a good morning we are getting this one if uh, below 20 means if i given 19 what is the message we'll get now good day i need i think so save it reload good day wow how the code is going to be executing step by step and if it is uh, like uh, above 20 means uh, 20 also we can give yeah, about 20 means 21 yes save it and run the code good evening this block of code is going to be executing if whenever we are calling the code based on the condition which condition is making true that block of code only it will verify if the uh, first block is a uh, false second block is false third block is false continuously it will check till the true if nothing is there it will straight away it will go to else part so this way you can prepare decision making systems coding very perfectly. So I would suggest to you rather than writing if else statements, if it is a simple code like a decision making system, you may prepare the if else statements only one or two. Group of programs, group of logic if you want to add to run a particular statement, use switch cases. That we will see in next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, we are going to learn a very simple lecture which is a uh, control flow statement loop statement. So here, why loop we are trying to practicing now. So why we require to use loop statements? Most of the familiar programming languages all will follow in the world while, do while, for loop and like for each these are the loop statements only we'll use so here while loop is using to execute a block of code multiple times same statement is repeatedly will execute and uh, runs here if we have written any condition till the condition is satisfied loop will continues and iterates we call it as iterates basic html page is taken over here to understand very simple example and the paragraph id here and the script tags are inside the body only i have written to write here the code and practicing very well in the showing the output window this is in a chrome browser we are going to seeing this the browser output here so let's begin with the syntax and writing the while loop statement very simply i'll show you very simply i'll show you the while loop so while writing the while loop, how we need to write, let's say, maybe like uh, we have to take a variable i equal to initiate value of zero. Okay, so while is a reserved keyword, while is a reserved keyword, we need to write method open and end parenthesis, i less than or equal to, you may put your wish, i less than 10 inside the, uh, parenthesis I have added i less than 10 so I need to initiate the block of code while loop block of code which is like uh, open and end parenthesis so it is done so what it is here while i less than 10 uh, I may write like a very simple statement here so one variable is required for myself like uh, what I can write 
statement no mm. string name i can write yes name so something i need to like a uh, concatenating everything uh, on every time the number is uh, i'm going to printing the number i'm going to printing so the number is the number is uh, the i we can add here yes the i and terminate so this name i'm going to using inside the loop or outside so i'll declare here let name equal to empty string so whenever you are using loop repeatedly the something like variables you need to define a variable double strings these are the empty strings means you are making this variable always empty while the code is entering here then it will be used here to assigning something all right now let's say don't run immediately don't run any one why because why less than 10 here i have defined and why it is printing when is the loop is entering if the condition is true it will be entered inside the block and it, this code is going to be execute now i it is less than i is initial value is zero so it is a condition is true it is going to be printing here and again it is come back to here and verify i the same value is zero only so infinity loop will create so what we need to do now we have a learn something incrementing of uh, i value by using i plus plus on every iteration loop will run and uh, first it will be verifies and enter into the block it will print then it will go to here it will be incremented by i value by plus one so it will be incremented means initiate to zero means it will be converted into one then it will verify here it's i value one less than 10 satisfied it will print again it will be incremented means i value 2 in the same way loop statement will till run till the value is reached 10 so let's see that values are going to be printing here so this name i'm going to assigning um, this name is i'm going to assigning here yes save it and this i you know this id is going to be applied for paragraph tag very simple lectures okay save it and run it oh i'm sorry so what we need to do now i need to take something a break line either start or end position so i'll write here we are save it run it wow the number is zero one two three four how many iterations are there if i am putting here it is less than or equal to so we'll get 10 also save it reload yes 10 if i am making i value as 1 i value as 1 save it run it from 1 onwards it will initiate how beauty the program it is how simple it is that is an important so now let's see by making i am making a very simple multiplication like uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, this the multiplication table is there, no? So let's see how it will be done very easily, very, very easily. So let, uh, what I need to take, one more variable I need to take, let n I am taking equal to uh, something, 5 table I will write. So how I am constructing this, very simply you may observe. So n as a variable, so the number is making here, and uh, putting something uh, we need to put like uh, concatenation is required here so plus plus i'm taking and inside n i am adding okay first i am printing 5 5 into is required so 5 into means uh, taking double quotes 5 into okay so save this and run it first okay five five ones are how much five twos are how much so here after i we need equal to so make the plus after i we need to make the plus like uh, i'll take a copy of this code and after i i'll paste it so equal to is required here so adding equal to i'm sorry it's a equal to after equal to uh, after equal to we need to concatenate uh, save this run it 
nothing will get why because incomplete code incomplete code so after i what we need to add here um, the number n into i yes n into i that's it is it i yes this is i so number i n into i save it run it wow the number is 5 into 1 5 5 2 is 10 5 3 is 15 5 4 is 20 so how simply we are preparing multiplication table using while loop if you want to make 20 up to 20 levels of this while loop you just change the number from 10 to 20 save it run it wow it's extending if you want 100 200 check it how many times your loop should run you define the number over here it will runs i hope it's very simple and easy lecture we'll catch you in the next lecture with the do while thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to know do while the differences between while and do while is major important one thing only that is while loop will verify the condition first then it will be entered into the block of code while do do while first it will enter the block of the code then it will verify the condition on the while so how simply we are going to changing these things let's see very simple so these while I am making cut from here and here I am pasting. Alright, now it is a terminate. Okay, now let's check. Here I need to add do. Oh sorry. Uh, here I need to add do. Mostly my program is over. So the text number i and i plus plus then do. Let's run check, run and uh, check this uh, program. See, same thing will be get in output. Same thing. There is no change at all. So what happens here? What happens here? First, it will enter into the block of code. First, it will enter into the block of code. Let's check. I may change like I value. It's not 12. Where it will execute or not. Let's check. Yeah. Change the condition. Only I it is 12. So first, it is entering directly the code. And again incrementing the number of uh, i value then it is verifying it's a fail the condition and loop is executed like terminated how simply we are uh, prepared this uh, do while so the do enter the block of code and uh, verify the condition if it is fails it will be terminated if it is a uh, i value is a uh, 2 save it till 10 it will run till before below 10 it will run so this is the way we can prepare the do while statement in javascript the same logic will be applied for many of the programming languages so we'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn for loop statement so here for loop is also a loop statement which will runs a statement repeatedly executes a particular block of code till the condition is satisfied so the execution while iteration will happens loop statement will iterates means circle how the circle will runs the same way loop statement for loop statement also will runs like a statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 so on it will goes where we can call it as the statement 1 2 3 we'll see by writing the syntax and all let uh, text i'm taking a simple text to be assigned something where we need to reuse inside a loop statement okay for writing the for let variable i equal to 0 i equal to 0 terminate it is a called like statement 1 and i less than 10 
this is the conditional statement is true and i plus plus on incrementing we have applied like a while loop statement how we have written uh, after the statement printing i plus plus incrementation of the value on each iteration the same way here it would be added so now very simply as we observed as we observed for loop a block will be entered over here so what we need to construct inside the block very simply this text message I am writing plus equal to like a putting something like a, the number or the value is whatever it you want whatever it you want to put something uh, I we need to present no so the I value only will put yes and after I we should require like a some break so how I can write the break making concatenation I and here we can put like a uh, uh, VR tag otherwise uh, we'll get like a continuously till the end we'll get it so this text is going to be assigning for this variable save it run it number is 0 1 2 3 4 5 how we have seen in the while loop the same will be applied here so let 0 initiating of the loop by default it's a let 0 so i less than 10 till the below 10 it will be the condition if it is satisfied then the loop will terminate then i plus plus when it is entering this will be treated verified and it will be check here and it will enter into the block now immediately once i 0 it is printed again it will goes to here i value is incremented by plus 1 then again verifies the condition it's a incremented like a plus 1 means it's a 2 i value verified if the condition is satisfied again it in this statement is going to be print so 2 is printed again it will be verified i increment the value i plus plus means i value is 3 verified and printing now the 3 is printed so on till 9 why it is 10 if it is the same i value is 10 less than 10 means it's the condition will false and it's a fail the condition so the loop will terminate here and loop will exit and uh, so we have seen the till 9 the numbers so these text i'm going to assigning to our html element with the p tag so we are getting an output accurately at the end so how simply it is how simply the lecture is going away so i hope it's very simple and easy similarly we'll see how to run uh, like uh, a group of uh, uh, array elements a group of array elements how we can check let's see these are the very simple let a text have taken here and uh, in text not required now uh, constant fruits shall i take or uh, yeah fruits i will take within uh, here i may put like a apple Mm, banana kiwi n number of fruits you may write three i have written and one more i'll write mm, pine okay so how i can read this const like a fruits one by one using for loop statement that's very easy i equal to zero let i equal to zero it's not a default like initiating value i'm taking here or else we may put like i value at the loop statement also here it is there we can use the same thing also let's try one by one let's try so let uh, i need to identify the length of uh, this fruits so how i can check fruits dot l e n l e n g t h this method will identify the fruits how many are there it will give the number of counting the length count it will be stored in the len variable so now how i am taking these things let's check one by one okay so to be print requirement of uh, let text to be required let it be yeah now let i equal to zero let i equal to zero i less than like uh, this length based on the length it will be verified okay this is the number is going to be storing 
one two three four that way so i'm verifying with the my i value so anyhow i is a going to be plus plus here so i need to print this fruits one by one um, the fruits are the fruits are how i can print the fruits how i can print the fruits mm, yeah let's check here mm, f r u i t s fruits of fruits of i we need to take let's check let let me check that uh, this text is going to be assigned through this paragraph let me check how the output will comes wow the fruits are apple the fruit is uh, we can put fruit is the fruit is okay just save it and reload the fruit is apple banana kiwi pine independently we are reading each and every item so if i added one more fruit like uh, uh, gava save it reload gava is added how beauty it is there is a nothing will take much time to execute these statements why because the javascript on clients itself it will runs very quickly great i hope it's very simple and better to understand easy lecture catch you soon thank you Welcome here. In this lecture, we will be assigned a simple coding exercise for you to solve. So here, based on the previous lectures, we are trying to giving you a simple assignment to test your knowledge. Making this like a cracking this simple query, you will understand what you have learned so far. We hope that mostly you will crack it. and you will identify the solution would be there in immediate next lecture so let's see what is the problem statement prepare a multiplication table using javascript to print the output of html page the expected output is the multiplication table for number 2 so 2 2s are 4 2 2s are 2 3s are 6 2 4s are 8 these multiplication table up to 10 levels so try yourself i hope most of the students one of the while loop lecture is there you can revise it and construct for loop statement according to the multiplication table let me see your findings anyhow you will get next lecture solution for this once you write it your code and test with our solution thank you hello everyone welcome here here is solution for your coding exercise so let's check most of the th like a uh, students we hope that accurately completed your problem statement please check with your compare with the your solution and logic which is implemented by yourself and here is your problem statement solution so let uh, take the numbers of a text and n and this statement we have implemented over here with the multiplication table is which is going to be printing and let i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 i plus plus here it is the same thing where uh, we have implemented in while loop you need to know how to construct a string formatting and how the operators are applying while uh, taking an independent as a number inputs so finally you will get like a going to be assigned like a document that get element by id with that value is going to be assigning to this particular id which is a paragraph tag you will see the output i hope uh, most of the students are uh, perfectly cracked i think so if not please uh, recap with a uh, retake a code and practice yourself okay thank you very much
Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn JavaScript functions. A very simple and basic lecture you are going to learning that is creating a function in JavaScript and how to access this function you are going to be learning. Let's see. Very simple lecture we have prepared here. So the function preparation to assigning a particular value to this JavaScript element only. So let's see how the things are going to be happen here. So the function, what is function? So the function I have told you in the introduction lecture, whereas uh, I'll give you a simple example over here also. So far we have written a code in a single form. As a programmer, is better way to organize our code to break a small chunks of our code. Why we require to making a small to manage and reuse and maintenance in multiple ways, where the problem statement is required to reuse. So based on this function, we can call and reuse the code. That is the purpose we are making and creating the functions. Functions will play key role in your program. So always try to practice more while writing the functions and making the small small chunks of programs. So let's see a basic function how it would be. Okay, parameters we call it as and passing the arguments we call it as. I'll clearly explain you one by one. So let x equal to something. Okay. So first we need to like uh, prepare a function. Let's like uh, we have to prepare a function. Uh, simply I'll write a function. Yeah, here I'll write it first. Mm -hmm. My function name is f u n c t i o n. Function using the keyword of function we need to write the function in JavaScript. Okay, mm -hmm. we call it as uh, multiplication. M U L T plication. My function name is multiplication. So the multiplication is required a comma b two values. Inside I'm writing a written keyword R E T U R N written keyword to returning a into b. These two values I'm going to getting a return. Return method like a, a keyword will throw out where the function is called. So this function I'm calling from let x equal to here I'm calling this function. All right. And here I'm sending two comma um, four two values I'm sending. When I'm calling this function, what happens? These are the parameters. We can say that where the function inside we are writing some variables and where we are accessing this function from here. I'm calling this function. Okay. So this function where I am calling, we are specifying the data values. These will be called as arguments. Okay. So very clearly, what happens when I am x when let declared with the variable of x, I am calling equal to I am calling the uh, particular multiplication function by passing these two arguments as the data values. So what happens once I, if I called it, it will be reached here. A is assigned by two. B well value like a variable is assigned with the four. So now here it is uh, inside entering the values inside the block of function. A into B is happening two into four. Two fours are eight. So the total value is written using written keyword. It will be how the ball is bounced back when you throw to the wall. The same way function will return the value of the total what it is inside. Then this value is coming back to here and it will be assigned to the x. So these x I am using here. Let's see how simple using the functions. Now let's see if I run this code, I have to see like uh, this value is going to be assigning to this p tag. We have to see the output here. Let's save the document and run. So wow, eight I am getting very clearly, very simply. If I am applying like a addition symbol, I'll get what I'll get it here. Two plus four, reload six. I'll get that's it. How simple it is by making function constructions very very easily. We can prepare. All right, 
and also you can call the function from here itself using the x place you may call the function also how simple it is i'll show you uh, let's take uh, the same function and uh, i'll put here and uh, constant c o n s t const function and uh, multiplication i'll call instead of x and uh, here i'll pass the values of 2 comma 5 any value you wish any value you may send it no problem okay and uh, let x is not required now let x is not required now let's see how it will be save it and uh, 257 reload okay nothing we are getting so let me check here first mm. constant function cynst function multiplication okay uh, just wait we have to write this way constant multiplication equal to function this way we need to write so now how it would be called this variable is going to be assigning here so this variable we are passing this values this will be called as function constructing a function so save it and run it we are getting the value if it is a multiplication you will get the multiplication value reload that's it the similar either way we can prepare a function it will be called like a, this method is called like func function construction of a function function constructor clearly i can say that function constructor all right in the next lecture, we'll see more and more examples with how to like make more functionality with the functions. Okay, I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn call method with the passing of arguments in functions so javascript function basic function we have seen earlier now we are going to extending more and more with the advanced function we are going to seeing now let's see within a script how i am preparing a function statements very simply using const keyword person i'm taking a person words and these like um, like uh, this is i am going to assigning like a dictionary items so let's see here i'll add like a full name that equal to like a here i am writing like a if you n yes function function name these are the things are required here it's in a uh, sublime text editor is giving these things okay so the function inside the function i am creating two arguments what is a city comma country c o u n t r y country two parameters i have added now the body would be the body of the function would be written uh, this keyword would be used whenever we are implementing inside so i'll write this uh, implementation first name and uh, plus plus concatenation would be done with this dot last name this dot last name and again concatenation would be there uh, with the help of city yeah city and uh, same again if uh, what we need to do like uh, city after city we need to put like a uh, plus plus again uh, double quotes comma country yes country and terminate so this is the function where we have uh, prepared for the written statement so where is the first name where is the last name let's see i'm making independent I'm making independent like a person like a person one person two data we are going to preparing now 
so const like a pr is going one uh, here what we can create yes now what we require now first name mm, what is the first name for the person like uh, john <coughs> last name would be mm, sorry Patrick. so the dictionary items i'm prepared here so here it is not terminated we can put the comma so the first name last name of uh, the person one is over so take a copy of this code block and make it as one more data item conveniently which is a person two okay so mary alice mary alice so the data of the two persons we have added and we have prepared a function very clearly done successfully all right now we need to call the particularly this function with the full name how using the call method we can call it so let's see now how it is possible to call let's write here um, like a person yes person we have a created a class with the variable of the person by pressing dot by pressing dot full name where we have uh, specified the full name of the uh, function yes this one this one person dot we are getting not full name yes we are getting here so the person dot full name we have a identified person dot full name by pressing dot there is a method called c a l l call and here we need to call using the call method to passing the arguments to the function which function this full name function so what is the first one uh, either this data or this data which data you want to call based on that you have to specify so i am taking as the first one first argument and making comma what are the two arguments so i grab that and comma country india save it and run the program wow john perry hyderabad india he is a successfully coming like a c now you may understand this full function name is going to be assigning this first name and last name from the person one so the first name last name these are going to be this keyword is used to this keyword is used to representing the data items are going to be mapping for this particular function all right similarly this dot last name so if i given this uh, call method the person to what happens now this block of code will be going to be taken as this save it and reload mary alice hyderabad india if you want to change this argument values you can change it and test yourself uh, very accurately so the ultimately you are seeing the result with the using of call method all right by passing the arguments to the function and how we are going to be recalling with the group of data using json objects also very similar to this okay we'll catch you in the next lecture by making simplification of the passing parameters how making very simply we'll see okay thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn a very simple lecture that is functions with parameters earlier lecture also we have observed the passing the arguments and parameters those lectures will like a, especially for this lecture we are making a very simplification we have applied here so let's see out of uh, like uh, by using like a uh, function adding with the for loop statement how simply we are uh, going to be making here you may observe so let's see like uh, one by one uh, we are going to preparing to identify 
like uh, what we can say a function like a sum of all numbers okay by passing the parameter by creating the function for sum of all numbers let's see if you can see it I can function sum tot I can say some total okay and here I'm uh, making a function name and uh, now let's see some total why I'm making multiple parameters so I'll uh, send I'll I'll make it uh, on while calling the function so some total I'm putting here okay let uh, sum equal to initial value is 0 and terminate the code and uh, making reading all the items whenever we are having some group of data we need to read like a uh, using for loop we need to write all right for loop we need to write i equal to 0 i less than arguments dot length what the arguments are going to be calling from a particular area we need to put like arguments dot length so we are going to be assigning something like uh, arguments dot length let's check it a r g u men's arguments dot length to identifying the arguments passing arguments length so i plus plus okay inside the for loop inside the for loop block once we initiated the for loop we need to again uh, initiate the things so some uh, plus equal to what I need to write here arguments of I arguments of I I need to write and terminate the thing okay so arguments of I I need to terminate the thing uh, written sum yes written sum of the numbers what we have prepared so while calling the sum tot function let's take a sum function and uh, here so I need to add some numbers over here now some 2 some 3 some 5 3 only I am sending to the function let's check first okay this uh, total is going to be assigned this function is going to call to this function and uh, here uh, it will be identify and uh, once we'll get the written we'll get the assigned to this demo this paragraph is going to be assigned some value we will be able to see in the output save it and run it wow 10 we are getting so 5 it is correct so let's change the numbers more save it and run wow accurately we are getting we are, we are able to calling the value like uh, to the function and we are able to getting the output in successfully so let's see this is the function name we are calling this function with the multiple data parameters these are arguments these are if we are assigned any number of argue like a parameters here based on the parameters only we need to uh, send the function here what happening there is a no restriction for these type of functions I have prepared a dynamic uh, function for yourself to understand very easily so n number of arguments you may add here like numbers so it will be called this function it will be entered here and the loop will check the arguments uh, how many you are passed and according to the arguments it will be verify the length and uh, it will be like uh, treated here so how simple and how beauty it is so here arguments passed by value objects are passed by references strongly remember arguments are passed by values objects are passed by reference in the javascript coding so i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to handle such a errors while writing in live program. So try catch block. To handle such a errors, you need to implement a code using like see within a script tag, we need to implement this. Here I am implementing. So this is not required for modern browsers. So hence I am removing. So here the code would be try within a parenthesis here it is 
C A T C H catch catch E R R catch would be uh, like uh, catching the errors here we need to write something like uh, error message this is the catch block will catch the errors if any and uh, like uh, on catch once the error is happened something it will be catching here and it will uh, runs the catch block if any program is written to throw to the user all right now let me check one simple thing here let me check to write a simple thing over here and uh, i'll explain you okay so just i'm adding a simple program to verifying uh, a clear information like uh, by implementing see before going to implementing here uh, just i'm writing something like uh, alert message a l e r t alert uh, within uh, here I can write uh, welcome to Java script welcome to Java script now I terminate it save it and see welcome to Java script output we are able to see in here close it so this alert is getting very perfectly we are getting an error like message in when I refresh the browser the alert welcome to JavaScript message I am able to successfully get it instead of uh, like uh, alert i may add it something i don't know save it just run it we are not able to getting the message in such a time we need to take this message this alert message to cut here cut here and paste into the try block paste into the try block and if we run it what is the message is the error is happening in the try block it will be catched through this catch method so once it is the error is catching like uh, we need to check with the uh, some output we require now like uh, we may place it like uh, paragraph tag here yes p tag with the id equal to to assign something it's a demo okay so now here what i'll write to get an output document dot get element by id document get element by id this demo dot inner html that equal to err specifically err what err this err dot message what the message is going to be assigned to this particular error message will be assigned to here and that message I am assigning to our uh, JavaScript element. So this ID is going to be presenting here what is the error is happening. So it will be greatly helpful for you. When I save this code and reload, see, is not defined. A W E L E R T is not defined message we are able to get in here. So this is the error message it is there. So if I am removing this and uh, something if I have written like alert, save it, see welcome to the message message will come successfully so to making javascript unknown things or any wrong may be happening you may put like a try catch block coding try catch block coding to handle such a great errors and i easily identify what the mistake is happening in your program and unknownly some data is wrongly coming inside the program Maybe something is happen. So such a cases of uh, functionalities also you may catch by writing try catch block coding. Always try to practice try catch block coding where you will handle like uh, great uh, issues, great problem statements you may write yourself and handling. If you are not coming in the client side, you may check inside what happening by putting such a alert messages and all. Okay. So happily practice this. In the next lecture, we learn many things. See you there. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn try catch finally block. 
we have seen previous lecture it is a try catch blocks only now we are extending these error messages to handling see here we can write finally so inside the block respective of this finally block will execute the code statement which is written here uh, irrespective of a try catch it will be finally at final it will execute how these things we are going to be explaining more in detail here let's see let's uh, take a simple example and exercise over here by taking like uh, input yeah input will take like uh, like input means text box yeah input type it is an a uh, uh, we can take it as an a text box we can take and the name we may take it as an a like uh, demo and id also we may take it as an a demo all right so input text box is taken reload this is the input text box something okay so for this input text box i am taking like a one uh, button to take an action so the button what the button it would be like a testing value okay button would be displaced with the testing value very good so the button like a type is button we need not to write whereas if we need to write like b u t t o n and uh, on click we need to prepare a function on click we need to prepare a function inside the javascript so here let's check the javascript is here try catch finally block in this way only we are going to preparing this function so let me write the function first uh, so function function name of the function is my uh, value my cals my cals i am writing my function name okay so inside the function what i am trying to write in the code so what i am to uh, trying to write in the code let's see the message i want to push here like uh, p1 as an id so here what i'll write <coughs> C O N S T const message message the equal to document dot get element by id of get element by id of p one <coughs> terminate now message like uh, sorry uh, message dot inner h t m l that equal to by default it is an empty if it is there any messages by default if it is there any messages it will be empty so what i am trying to adding here let uh, let uh, some x y z anything x equal to document dot get element by id get element by id what is the id we need to choose this input this input dot value what value which is entered inside the some number in the text box by the user like this numbers okay when I, when i press something it should be treated something some calculation i'll i'll show you some functionality i'm preparing here let's now Uh, we should initiate our try catch block coding so i'm taking this group of like a try catch finally block here i am adding paste it okay so according to the block of code you may set right this code yeah <coughs> catch finally all right this way we need to write this is a brace for this function okay and now in inside the try if x equal to equal to empty if x equal to equal to empty what the message will say 
see we should receive some message to output no T H R O W. throw keyword will help you such keywords is E M P T Y terminate the line okay if there is a method called is n a n means not a number method is there if not a number which one these x user entered something nothing is there and uh, like uh, some like abc may he may enter and uh, he may test it how it is uh, possible to get so we are offering the user to entering the like uh, some numbers of 5 to 10 numbers only in between that's it okay 5 to 10 or 5 to 20 the range we may put we may fix it so for that i'll write a line statement over here with the p tag please enter number between 5 to 10 only save run okay so the user needs to understand where he needs to enter so how i will control this uh, numbers so how i will control this number if x not a number will throw in a message what is the message will throw to the user let's see i'll take this copy of this code and paste it's not a number it's not a number it's not a number two things are completed so if we abc this throw so these all the things will be handled one by one okay so if if like uh, let's see if uh, x equal to number of if x equal to number of uh, let me write to here something where is the try block only no yes x yeah x equal to number of this x and terminate and let's see if if it is a number uh, x greater than 10 throw it's too high throw terminate too high and uh, we may put like a one more if condition messages like throwing an errors messages to the user and uh, x less than yeah below if it is two it's like a throw a message to it's too low perfect so it's too low and uh, something catching an error the error is a message is a like a, uh, how we can take message dot this we need to put there yeah this thing we need to put so these all are not required yeah message so the message what we need to write here in a message it is like a uh, something uh, input concatenation with er if you want more like dot message also you may add here okay and uh, finally we are going to presenting in a data with the final statement like uh, document dot get element by id of demo of this id this id input id okay and uh, dot val ue value is equal to empty once the validation part is completed it will be like uh, making empty at finally irrespective of try block may run may not run or catch block may run may not run it should be run on every running of the program every time save it reload the page and enter it click here so will i get anything here let me check if a run so if you number run so i think uh, this is uh, not working my calc yes why it is not running 
we need to write inside the button this function. How we will write the function? Let's see. On click, yeah, on C L I C K. On click, what is the function name? My C A C L. So L C is the function name we have to write. Okay, L C my caps. Okay, save it, save it, and reload the page. Testing some value testing number testing so let me check what happening here and uh, why this is uh, not properly giving and uh, making in actions to my requirements okay so what I need to do now what I need to do now message I have given document dot get element by ID message dot inner HTML empty and uh, so let x equal to document dot get element by ID of for demo the value which is receiving and text box which is entered so ID so the name I'll remove it if both are there there is a no problem at all both should be acceptable okay both should be acceptable so let me check I have to clean check I have to verify the code on function it is my calc try block is inserted here if x equal to equal to empty if x equal to equal to empty throw is empty that is perfect is nan x is not a number of x true it's not a number yeah this is also perfect now x equal to if it is not a number x equal to number of x in umbr that is correct if x greater than 10 uh, so this is a throw this keyword it should be it's a throw save it let reload no oh sorry 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 only the, like uh, between the number we have to enter testing okay so let's check like uh, till this part is reached and it is a uh, too low also we have written okay now Try, back, try block is completed. Now, what we need to see catching in other message.inner HTML input it is taking plus error code. Correct. Now, finally, block is having document dot get element by ID of demo, which is a making an empty. That's it making an empty that is correct so what you will what we need to do save the program and run it uh, a uh, to something we are not able to getting an output properly the same program only we need to implement My C A L C my cals on C L I C K on click button type B U T T O N on C L I C K my C A L C cals. Sorry, really great. We have to put a function. So very simply we can miss the things. Save this and reload. See. If I am entering like a empty, it's a input is empty, it is coming. Where it is input is empty. So this one is coming. Okay. So if I entered two, input is too low. If it is one, input is too low. Oh, nine. Yes, valid. And some text input is too low. So 
any single line if you've written inside the javascript you may get an error messages okay so if i remove this and saving and running you won't get anything once like a, it's a memory i think so sometimes it may call like a memory inside the memory it may be allocated in javascript so many time if you are able, if you are not able to getting a proper output a proper output in your uh, javascript programs well, like uh, you need to create uh, like uh, clear the catchy up from your browser and you need to test very clearly then only you will get proper output okay if you want to make this number as a 20 like save it and uh, you need to change the number inside the code values save it and run so nine uh, like uh, 19 is also acceptable happily about to the 19 uh, 20 then it will give you like uh, some error message to you okay so all you need to test very clearly and uh, practice yourself so the runtime errors any messages will be given by using the throw keyword we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn on submit click form validation. So I will show you a few parameters. So based on that, you may validate very clearly your form. Let's begin by creating a simple HTML form. So the form is by writing form tag and uh, input tags for name and uh, input type text name or id you may take anything f name okay so or else you may also add id also email so the input type email and the name is email just simply i'm giving two parameters over here all right along with this two i'm putting here like uh, input type it is like uh, submit yeah submit it is there and the name also i'll give you like uh, uh, submit and the value also i'll give like uh, submit value is enough name is not required so i'm removing this name yes save this let's check here okay there is an alignment is required to make like uh, some break line I need to put like uh, some br line save it wow so this way i have a created a simple form and uh, here i can write uh, two break lines let's check yes perfect now this is my form when i click this form when i click this form i need to like validate these two are not empty these two are not empty so let's see how i am going to validate it for this i am going to writing like a form name parameter it is like uh, some values i have to put here like uh, my small letter my reg or my login whatever it the name you may put here okay and uh, method we need to write like a post method you need to use either post method or get method anyone you may apply in php forms or any dynamic forms okay action if it's not mentioned any action it will be treated as self if you want to redirect some other places it may you may write action and uh, path of the file where it is required so now i need to write a specific functionality for on submit functionality to validate so where i can write this validation yeah either here below to the form or we may write here in, uh, by making a script tag yes this is the latest browser I'm using now. So script to tab I'm not applying here. So here I'll write. Okay. Here what I'll write my function. Function validation. My function name is validation. Alright. So here uh, you may write validation or validate form anything. Any name or my registration. Any custom name you may write. Not specific to this validation only. 
I'm doing the validation for the purpose only. I'm preparing the name of validation only. Okay. Now let x equal to like a document dot uh, forms like a forms of what is the form name what is the form name like uh, i am used here my rdg my registration form of my registration form of what is the my text box name this text box first text box name is controller name is f name so you need to write f name here so once it is done what you need value inside the uh, like uh, this value which we are entering here some value that value you required to validate what exactly you need the value which is entered inside the box you require so let x we have taken so we have one more parameter take a copy and paste here you may take like uh, next immediate letter it is y and the controller name is email dot value that's it two things are getting from the html element to the input values to here like um, javascript code now see now the game starts now if x equal to equal to if it is empty what i what i need to write here very simply I'll write very simply, sorry, not here. Yeah, here I need to write uh, immediately. It should be A-L-E-R-T alert. Mm, name must be, must be, name must be filled. Cannot be blank. Whatever it, uh, statement you want to write, you can write here. Return uh, false. Return false. Now save it and run something submit it okay we have to call the validation function at here no so let's uh, call it uh, how i can call it on submit yes on submit event i need to call and uh, here return what is the function name validation yes oh sorry validate i o n validation yes return validation yes save this yeah save this and reload yes continue submit so return validation uh, anything else to be there here it should come like uh, something function it is written validation validation it is written same like a uh, written uh, on submit on submit equal to written validation this validation only we have a written here yes r e t u r n it's a wrong message it's written a written okay now save this and reload it submit wow name must be filled out name must be filled out how it is uh, it's not allowing to submit the data so return validation this function i am calling while when on button click on button submission i am calling this function so one thing i have written so next thing how simply take a copy hit enter change the variable of uh, y and uh, email must be filled that's it email must be filled that's it over save it reload the form and submit name must be filled once it is done something it is entered submit email must be filled if it is entered the email submit you are like uh, here in html5 it is the email if you are type given automatically it will be accept only emails that validation is also done by yourself that a helper the modern browsers will help in that way also while submit then only the form will acceptable very accurately so this is the on submission validations using javascript very simply using if else statements and uh, making how you are going to deal with the java html elements to controlling javascript you will be if you done so far lectures this is a very simple concept yours I hope so. 
we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to validate input numeric values so let's check with by creating a simple form in html we'll see here form tag open and and now we are going to writing inside something phone number you may take and uh, here we need to write like uh, input type it's an our text or number also you can take directly okay text or number if you are taken like a, a number only it will accept the numbers in javascript entry point unexpectedly if any other things are not going to be permit okay so input type text i'm taken very simply we have given so we need like a, one uh, this one no uh, button so input type button name instead of name we can take a value as submit now i am going to implementing a function called num valid is num valid maybe you may think it about yourself okay let uh, we need to take the input from the let we need to take the input from the Mm, input text box so how we will take the number let x equal to document uh, document dot get element element get element by name of this enumium dot value okay so we will get so we are getting uh, this uh, l e r t we are getting this x the value or not we need to check like by putting this x inside this alert message save it and run the program let's check it like uh, oh action we need to write for the form so a c t i o n action post method and my form name also if required uh, form name like you may write uh, name equal to my well my form name and writing is in my well store now the number 12 i have entered submitted so here we need to call this function no yes on submit or on click also we can write so i'll check it with the on submit yeah on submit return uh, num valid this num valid function I need to call it save this reload the page if i enter 12 submit alert should become no so document that get element by name in new m i have a specified uh, let me check with double quotes no number in new m yes no okay save it L E M E N T element by name correct save it reload the page R E T U R N R E T U R N num valid function that's correct action post I have specified uh, <laughs> action is not post sorry method method will use post okay if it is self not required for uh, not required for uh, okay so reload the page perfectly control f5 and uh, something you type so a l e r t alert x we are not getting so this is the string only we won't get so only x yeah document get element just i may take it like it's an id and um uh, 
document dot get element by id of num let's check now how uh, it will be treated now okay so the dot oh sorry 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 the terminator is required no the terminator is highly required no save it run the program so 2012 is the this id we have a given something written post on submit we have written so still what the mistake and like what the things we need to write here by id we are accepting let me check here i'll write another mode of this so let x equal to like a document dot uh, name of the function my val my form name this is okay and uh, by pressing the dot num is my like uh, name of the parameter dot value okay let's check now reload it something if i entered submit it's not taken mm. Let's change here. It's a my form. So the same form will be applied over here. Okay. And here it is name. So reload the form. No. So let me verify. So let's check here. It's a button we have written uh, replace to submit. Everything will be done now. Submit. So submitting something says something. If I am given 23, we are receiving 23 as an alert. Yes. So all we have to make in a concentration which very much required. So once X is receiving which the data input of text box which are like uh, which we are receiving able to receiving like a uh, alert alert on x we are able to see okay now comment this line okay comment this line very simply there is a method called if is nan that's it is n a n if it is not a number of like uh, what is that n u m it is an x so if it is not a number what we will write what we will write in a message else statement we can prepare uh, written sorry yes written t r u d okay written true like uh, if not a number what we will uh, convey the message to the user document dot get element by id of like uh, something uh, we need to convey the message to the user so with that id is i will put e r r o r i'll put it dot inner html that equal to um, custom message enter number in um only this error i made through here with uh, any span tag or p tag also we can write so id id that equal to error save it just check it now something if i am entering qw uh, yeah span tag we have to prepare here span id to be prepared to get an error message okay let's check with that uh, span tag mm. where here i need to write 
yes p a n yes pan yes this is pan is going to be like uh, id equal to e r r o r okay this message uh, copy yes done uh, yeah save it and reload the page successfully just submit yes let's see yes on submit you may observe here you are getting an error message like a span tag very clearly you are getting a message on fly and it's going on why because uh, so much uh, information i have added over here so it's happening i think so so if i am entering some number on submit we won't get anything if i am submitting some abcd on submit see something is happening like uh, on submit it is uh, immediately like uh, displaying error and it's throwing away it shouldn't go why it is happening uh, in my browser uh, uh, see it's keep on running in the, in the wave only in the wave only we need to write the code okay doc element under return true else return true it is uh, not this one yes 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 here uh, we can do one thing r e t u r n return false once it is uh, something is happening i am staying the screen return false if i write reload the page some number it's okay something else it's a number only got it so how simply uh, we can get the error messages control c break i'll put here save it reload the page yes asd submit enter numbers only okay i hope you will create very clearly this lectures by validating of the number validations i'll catch you soon thank you hello everyone welcome here php what it is let's begin the session php is a server side scripting language and powerful tool making dynamic and interactive web pages php is widely used open source programming language and its stable version is version 7 the latest version and which is released 8.0 and 8.1 is the now very very latest however most of the programs which are written and uh, legacy applications in php are using 7 version so you need to strongly remember to learn version 7 as well as in this particular course we are going to adding all the features which are upgraded to 8.0 and 8.1 also we are going to be covering in our lectures so example code i am showing here if you know the basic of html structure that very well and if you are not known yes we are going to starting from scratch to creating html page and adding php to integrating to the html page and how we are making a dynamic complete web page let's see php tags like less than question mark php open tag and closing tag is question mark and less than here it is showing in between echo and double quotes something is written like hello world program welcome to php and terminates with the ends the line of the code statement is ends with the terminator semicolon and see these are the code is written inside the body so how it is created and how we are able to getting output in page using apache server all you will learn step by step process what is php php is an open source acronym is for hypertext preprocessor php is widely used open source scripting language scripts are executed on server side only php is free and download and you may use it absolutely free to 
download and write the programs and build the programs in PHP absolutely free. PHP files looks like it contains plain text, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap and PHP code. PHP code is executed on server side and the result will be returned to the browser as plain HTML text. So PHP files have an extension with every file if you implemented a PHP code inside the file you need to save it with the extension of .php then only the server will understand yes the PHP form is having PHP code and compiler will run and produce an output in HTML with PHP what we can do yes it's a great query PHP generate dynamic page content can create, open, read, write, delete, close files on the server. PHP collect from data to save on database. Can create, update, delete data on your database. Can create user to user access and controlling the user using dynamic database with the access of user privileges. You can control the user. You may be restrict like controlling user means admin user client user, officer user and data entry operator user such a categorization you may do by using your database control. PHP encrypt the data using algorithms of MD5 or SHA or any other algorithm uh, we can use to encrypt the data. See these all are ready madely built in methods are available in PHP. We are going to discussing with the real world examples. With the PHP, you are not limited to output in HTML. Also, you can get an output like images, PDF files, flash movies. You can also output any text such as XSTML and XML. Why we need to use PHP only? Basically, I told you it's an open source and freely we can download and start initiating for to develop web application vast enterprise applications also and it runs various platforms of Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac, OS X, etc. PHP is compatible with almost all the servers which are using nowadays like Apache, IIS and etc. And all the cloud environments which are supporting PHP hosting environments. PHP supports wide range of databases like our relational database management systems, RDBMS, MySQL, MSSQL, PostgreSQL, and etc. PHP is a free download it from official PHP resources is www.php.net. PHP is easy to learn and run efficiently on the server side scripting. So, front end. HTML is the markup language we use to structure and give meaning our web page a layout. For an example, defining paragraphs, heading, data tables, or embedding the images, videos, and any other files. So CSS, which all we have done with the HTML, we can make it, it's a styling language. CSS is an styling language, we can make it beautification of HTML content. For example, setting background, color and fonts, laying out our content multiple columns, web page beautification will be done using CSS. Server side versus client side. See, when you are seen in a web development or web developer scenarios, you may be heard about server side and client side codes. So the client side code mostly we can say that HTML, CSS, JavaScript all these will be treated as browser itself. It will be runs and uh, it won't require any servers. So here server side code means it's required to run a server called compiler. So any dynamic language you may see like for an example PHP, Python, Ruby, Java 
or ASP.NET C Sharp programming languages are required to web server specifically to compile the thing and you will get an output. So PHP is completely will execute in server side programming language only. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to get and install XAMPP XAMP server for PHP, MySQL and Apache web server. So let's begin. To get, you need to go to Google and hit XAMPP. Just hit and enter. Let's see here. XAMPP installers and downloads for Apache friends. So XAMP is automatically it will create a PHP development environment. What, what you need to create and require PHP development environment. Let's see. XAMP is free and open source cross platform web server solution stack package developed by Apache friends. So consisting mainly the main part of Apache HTTP server, MariaDB database, MariaDB and MySQL database complete structure mostly both are same. So either you are using MySQL or MariaDB, anyone is okay. So and interpreters for script written in the PHP Perl programming language also will support XAMPP server. It's a simply it will be called as XAMPP server, XAMPP server. It will completely create an environment of PHP based web application development environment, which you need like PHP, MySQL and Apache. The major components which the tools will automatically install along with this XAMPP package software. So let's see, in this system, I'm showing you in installation of XAMPP server in Windows. So accordingly, it's an, a tool is cross platform tool where it can completely supports any of the operating system, most popular operating systems of Windows, Linux, Mac, OS X and more. So let's see which operating system you are using and check with your downloads. Let's, uh, I'm clicking on download very simply. Yeah, here it is on a Windows operating system. So it is showing like uh, something, the versions it is showing. 7.4, 8.0, 8.1. I have told you like a previous lecture, the latest one. So we are going with 7.4, like a stable version we are going. Okay, so I'm clicking here for download. It's going to be downloading. Now I'm back here and exam for Linux. I have chosen here 7.4 for Windows. Also, you need to choose the same version, even earlier, also no problem. And exam for Linux. If you are using Linux operating system, choose this one. And uh, see exam for OS X or Mac. Check with this. And uh, WordPress also here. Okay. So accordingly, which operating system you are using. Comfortably, you just download this package and install in your computer system and follow if you need more additional requirements, how to install and how to initiate and start these things other than Windows, you may go through the documentation which is available over here. All right. So here, if you are following Windows operating system, you completely follow my guidelines and lecture, you will know from the scratch. So once the download is completed, see here it is there exam for windows it is downloaded for 64 bit operating system i am using here so double click on the downloaded exam package so it is it will ask you like user control say yes and now once it is downloaded you need to double click the package uh, let's see it will initiating to installing so important because active user accounts of your system yes click ok so welcome to the exam setup wizard click next so here you may observe, you, here you may observe like MySQL, FileZilla, FTP server, Mercury Mail server, Tomcat, Perl, 
and a php my admin webilizer fix and mail these all the things are there so we are basically covering in this particular lecture my apache mysql not filezilla and a mercury mail server tomcat also we are not interested here and perl also we are not using and uh, webilizer and fix and sms like uh, mails so remove all these which we require accordingly apache mysql php is here automatically and php my admin for accessing of mysql database so let put all these things and click next so the default path is select the path is c exam it will install let it be the same click next no changes there language is english if you are interested any other language you may choose your own language over there click next see learn more about bitnami for example if you want tick uh, you may put it or if you don't want you just uncheck it and uh, click next yeah setup is ready now click next yeah it is a uh, installing how it is like exam is an easy to install apache distribution containing mysql php and perl and it will take very less time it will take very less time why it depends upon your computer system memory and uh, processor and hard disk space so a very basic system like uh, at least 2 gb of ram and a two core of processor is uh, sufficient to install this application and all about to you may require like at least 5 gb of space in your computer system to maintain database and php applications at least i am telling you so if it is more than that means maybe you may use like a 4 gb or 8 gb memory or 4 core or 8 core processor and uh, like a 500 gb or 1 terabyte hard disk is good enough to create ample of projects and run very quickly while you want to see the outputs very quickly yes that system is also very comfortably you will work with the, all the tools which we are going to writing the programs in php so let's see it's a making like unpacking the files and installing the steps like uh, processing one by one while installation php it will install mysql it will install and apache also it will install and configure the things all all what we need to do just simply start the services and do and writing the programs i'll show you once it is completed we have a cleanly designed curriculum we have to making step by step processor we'll we are like a process we are going to be following all right my installation is making like a very last steps let's see yeah exam installation is completed so here you are getting like a windows security alert like a making a apache http server allow access don't block it allow access why because http like a local server we are creating so there is a no problem at all if you are blocking means like you won't get output in browser by defaultly apache server you will get an output in web browser so we are the using like uh, in my computer system i am using latest modern web browser of google chrome i am using here so you need to so do you want to start the control panel now check box is there put it there and click finish let it be the check and close it once installation is completed you see xam controller panel version 3.3.0 it is given here and apache and actions are given mysql actions are given so what you need to do to start a services you need to click on apache and uh, there is an a module name is apache action click on start see apache is started here you may see the log status attempting to start status changed detected running so apache service is started and port number 80 and 443 http plain port number is 80 and http yes port secure port number is 443 these are very very important interview questions so make sure to prepare these information while you are learning the php course prepare all the interview questions which i have making make a note of it so http port number is 80 443 is http yes port okay 
So Apache is started and click on start on MySQL services also. Click start. So it is asking like a like a accepting of MySQL port. So hello access. Hello access. Yes, MySQL is also detected and running. Means MySQL server is also perfectly running and started and running. Means our system installation process and setting of local environment is perfectly done. Let's see MySQL port is double three zero six. Three three zero six is the MySQL default port. This all or I am explaining you here. I'm not changing anything and just I'm uh, the control panel is also itself it's came and I'm just pressing action start starting the services. So MySQL default port is 3306 Apache which runs HTTP port is 80 and HTTP yes port is 443 to make sure to use the services and run the PHP program these all the communication and uh, services are very very important to start the programming so i hope it's very simple and very easy and whenever you want to like uh, restarting the mission means you need to start this jam control panel it will be available on your c drive open uh, explorer and go to c drive see xamp folder is here once you open the XAMPP folder, these all the installation files are here and you may go here and start, stop and XAMPP controller. If you double click the this icon XAMPP controller, you will see the same window. And you need to start the services of Apache and MySQL. MySQL means whenever you are accessing and initiating database, it's a MySQL is requirement. So accordingly how we are using how we are creating projects all will go with the our curriculum way i'll see you in the next lecture with the choosing editors and the next part is choosing editors so we'll see that one and one by one we'll go. thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to install Visual Studio Code Editor in your Windows computer system. So let's begin the steps which will involve to take download and installing step by step procedure we are going to learn now. Let's open the Google Chrome browser and just hit Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio code now here you may observe the download option click on download here the version which is comfortable you to like a windows or linux or mac operating system based on the version you may choose your visual studio code this is a free and open source you may get freely download and install in your computer system so here i'm trying to installing for windows choosing this 64 bit version so click on windows thanks for downloading see when i click the download option it is initiated for downloading vs code user setup once it is downloaded successfully you may go through the site these visual studio code how many softwares are going to be supports by adding the simple extensions yes python jupyter cc plus plus pylance and live server and uh, eslint visual studio Intelli uh, studio intelligence co these all by creating uh, like uh, node.js many many this visual studio code is going to be supporting so if you are interested to run and work with this visual studio code yes you may run and install with this visual studio code as well so now here the installation steps i am initiating by double click or right click on run in the particular this software which is downloaded 
now it will ask you like a uh, user agreement I accept the agreements click next the path which is the default it should be continue in my system it is on C drive if you want to change you need to press browse and choose the location where you want to install this software click next and no changes are not required so click next if any desktop icon you may require you can click here or else you, you can uh, uncheck the register code as an editor supported file types and uh, add path to the request shall start restart so let it be what it is there in the checkboxes let it be if you want if you are familiar what it is you just check on it or uncheck it okay now I am moving with the default values click next install now you see it depends upon the system performance memory and uh, the computer processor it will in it won't take much time so all you have to know the system configuration of your computer system is very basic either 2 GB or 3 GB RAM is also enough and uh, Pentium processor with the minimum 2 core is sufficient to work with the JavaScript applications so whenever you want to write and run the programs using JavaScript it's a front-end tool only and we are especially using client-side scripting language no so here very simply you may use with the low configuration systems as well as if you are comfortable to maintain a huge like a 16 GB of memory and a 512 GB of SSD of hard disk and core i5 or i7 processor yes you may use it there is a no problem at all I'm, I'm sharing your uh, convenient uh, information about the minimum requirements of the hardware specifications and higher specifications also I am sharing here okay now check mark is there for launch visual studio code yes let it be and click finish to starting visual studio code now let's see these are the light dark and dark high contrast and light contrast four options are available here these are the themes which theme you require to you are interested to moving yes you can choose later also you may change the theme and all it is a, there is enough facilities and features are available in this particular visual studio code so this one I am choosing light uh, color contrast if it is this one if it is this one if it is this one this way okay according to which one you want to use yes you can use it and start working with this and the browse color themes and uh, see file new file if you are initiating like a new file here it is a new file you want to all you need to do is create a file file and uh, save as uh, based on the extensions it will be treated which language you are going to be working with it. if it is javascript file extension is .js if it is python file extension is .py if it is html page the file extension is .html and css file file extension is .css so according to which file extension you are giving to saving your file in this particular project in visual studio code based on that the code editor will understand yes this type of file it is from there it will be compiled and it will give you the output accordingly what you have written inside the file so I wish you good luck in future lectures I'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to learn how to create PHP project on XAM environment now let's go step by step process to creating a PHP new project go to Explorer and C drive go to XAM directory so here you may identify HD docs this is the root directory where projects are going to be inside adding and open the HT docs now here you need to right click and create a new folder called PHP project 
or my project you may create or a demo project any name your wish so here I am creating my project name of the folder of the project name is my project so in this project directory you can able to access whichever you are creating a folders and directories over here so whenever you are starting and go back to here and exam controller double click on exam controller and start the services of apache and mysql once you started the services go to the browser any of your web browser it may be like uh, google chrome or mozilla firefox internet explorer microsoft edge or netscape navigator or any other popular web browser which you are using so go to over here and accessing of apache server to get how it is a project is access while written the php code so go to local host just simply type local host hit enter wow so if you are able to seeing this page your exam controller successfully installed and you are able to accessing this web page via apache web server which are perfectly working and running so here you may observe here like uh, uh, the default dashboard you are able to getting so our we have a created we have a created a project directory name which is called inside the HTTP docs it is my project so I make it the like remove the dashboard and hit my P R O J E C T my project hit enter so this one Apache the version and all you are able to saying index of my project it is showing so now you need to ready to create PHP based welcome file and you test your environment very clearly so I'll go to create in the next lecture hello world program using PHP file let's start the session and we'll go we'll catch you there thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn hello world welcome program in PHP let's begin how to do a welcome program using PHP step by step process let's start like uh, we have a previous lecture we have seen how to start exam controller and uh, we have already seen like uh, how to accessing our project and all so now in continuation of uh, our directory of a PHP project to creating PHP file we are seeing now let's open code editor of sublime text editor in this lecture we are going to using mostly a great sophisticated and uh, comfortable code editor of sublime text editor if you are willing to write or if you are good at writing of coding of uh, your own editor yes you may use it okay so now let's see to create a file what you need to do file new file here it is an untitled file is there so I am going to saving this file as save as where I want to save under C drive XAMPP folder HT docs where the root user like a root folder of Apache so HT docs under HT docs we have a created my project folder name so open that my project folder in case in your folder maybe you are created in your own name of your project choose the project and just hit welcome.php the file name should be php file will follow file name should be extension of dot php so clearly write down welcome.php okay save it once it is saved once your file is saved welcome.php what you need to do is just write in a html tag just write an less than ht see all the tags are showing why it is showing it the help of sublime text editor the code editor will help you to writing more ready-made available ready-madely available uh, tags 
and uh, library sources code editor will help you okay so i'm choosing this one anyone if you are wishing willing to comfortable with any other code editor yes you start with that and run it so html just type in ht and press tab so all these code you are getting very simply all these code you are getting very very simply now just i am hitting in this basic html code code editor is given i am not written anything just i am typing just less than ht and pressing tab i am getting all this basic structure all right now here i am typing it's a title is welcome and inside the body inside the body just i am initiating php open tag so how it is less than question mark php and and end tag of php is question mark and greater than in between if we written anything in between if we written anything will be treated as php code okay so open tag of php this one and end tag of php this one here i am writing echo double quotes and hello world hello world now the line will terminates with the semicolon so inside the double quotes if we written anything it will be printed in output in our screen echo will show you in output like a showing something which is a written in a php to be required as an output we'll use a keyword of echo all these details very detailedly you will see step by step in our like upcoming lectures so let's see by running this file how we are going to get so welcome.php is a file name we are added inside like a, let's see here where it is added see in my project this is welcome.php so the php file type is php source file so when you go to when you go to here in your browser localhost forward slash your project folder name forward slash and if you refresh here you will see the welcome.php if you type here uh, like um, welcome.php and hit enter so wow you are getting hello world it's really great you are getting hello world here means your php environment is successfully functioning and your welcome program is also done it so go back and uh, you may hit like uh, here i'm just making like uh, maximizing my window to getting in a good uh, view of this output okay so click on welcome.php you are getting hello world file all right how simple it is so you just better way to write any of your program and uh, instead of hello world you may write your own name or anything you just run this file and check with that if you did it you greatly successfully completed setting up your local development environment with welcome program i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn variables in php so by writing a simple variable we need to initiating from scratch here the next lecture onwards on the open file where the php form is there from there onwards we'll go to initiating the things so very keenly important this lecture just i'm going to initiating by xamp controller onwards so open xam which is installed in your computer system and open the xam controller yeah go to apache start and mysql also making initiate to start it so both are if modules are green means the services are start and running so minimize this one and open the browser and just hit localhost my project name is my project yeah which we have created in our earlier welcome program so when you back to here our example controller see it's a exam controller board here c drive under the exam folder ht docs see here it is a my project folder under the ht docs i have created my project which is a project directory where the project skeleton should be placed in a common folder only 
within a folder we'll create a skeleton like uh, html pages php pages images and uh, javascript separate separate uh, independent folders we'll create and there we'll place the real like uh, relevant uh, files and uh, images which we'll insert into the folder later time we'll uh, access these all the things one by one whenever we require to making the project completions okay so in this folder uh, we, i have to create like a, a new php file i'm going to create in now so how i will create go to sublime text editor yes go to sublime text editor we have seen yesterday also like here i'm going to creating file new file so the new file when i press control like uh, save as control shift to plus s in sublime text editor save as it is showing like my path where my project is located xamp htdocs and my project my project is my project folder name so here i'm going to creating a new file called variables or variable dot php variable dot php save it see now the title tab you may observe here the variable dot php it is here so very simply just press less than ht press the tab so you will get html basic skeleton over here without doing anything title is variables and the body i'm going to writing something like a php tag open tag this is an end tag for php yes open and end tag something is credit it's coming it's not required so this is a within a body we have to place the php open and end tag is it required to uh, like uh, have the all the pages should be follow the same like a uh, php like a html skeleton it's not mandatory it's up to your wish it may or it may not php form will works perfectly so i'll show you like few lectures with this html body frame and a few lectures will go like remove all this html and by writing this simple open and closing php tag only will write the program so you will be comfortable when you are working with the html css javascript mixing of all these things you will learn things very clearly okay now let's see what is variable variables are containers for storing an information variables are containers for storing an information so why it is a containers and why it is storing an information see when we are dealing with the dynamic parameters when we are dealing with the dynamic parameters we need uh, something address location inside the program when we are preparing some programming language to hold some data inside the program we require to hold the data like a containers it will be assigned somewhere else the data and it will carry forward to somewhere else where we need to use it so it will be called as container it's a lorry or truck something it's a container these variables data will contain and uh, it will be carry forward and wherever we require we'll use it and the same variable we may refer multiple times also so let's see i'll write here a few examples of the variables and before writing of the variables everyone should strongly remember everyone should strongly remember variable declaration in php should starts variable name should starts with the dollar symbol dollar sign dollar special character okay so the dollar and name see this is the variable declaration very simple php is a learning is very very simple so dollar name here i have written yes here i have written dollar name it's a variable name so some data i need to assign using equal to operator using equal to operator to assign the data so if i am using like double quotes inside the data uh, welcome so name here no so i'll specify my name any any data you may add here okay shaker is my name i have assigned and ends with the terminator in php every line if it is in php code every line should terminate with the 
semicolon. Strongly remember, this is the one line of statement in PHP. This is the variable and equal to operator and right side part is assigning the data to uh, this is a data which is a double quotes are having means it's a string. Our string lecture uh, will learn many things over there. So this is the data which is going to be assigning to this particular variable. Now how we need to access this variable? How we need to access this variable? Let's see. Very simple, very very simple by writing echo just see dollar name and ends with the terminator that's it. If I, if I run this variables.php form, I will get name like uh, what is the name? I will get this is an output. This data is going to be storing and uh, this container which is a variable and when I am reading and accessing this variable, I will see the data what inside the variable. I will not see the variable name over there at the output. If I want to print the same variable name again and again repeatedly, yes. If I written echo name multiple times, I'll get the same data multiple times. So let's see, first I will run this variable and let's see later. So here in the browser, see if I refresh variable.php, one more new page is appeared here. Either typing of the name here or if I click here, you will get like a, the variable what the data is assigned here. How awesome. So let's see. This is the name only we are getting at the output, what the variable is having. So if I written, uh, like why variables are important, if I want to write one more name, variable if I want to reuse the same variable again, let's see, save it and run the browser, just run the browser, see, twice it is coming. So there is a no gap between these two. So what I'll write again, echo and uh, here I'll write something like a break line. BR is a break line. So let's save it and reload the page. Yes. Same way if I want to use the same like uh, this thing in multiple times, what I need to do, take a copy, paste. Okay. Save it and reload. So again it's coming. So the variables are the containers and we require to use n number of times we can use the same variable. So here just I'm removing these things. Yeah. If I want to print something like a variable name, any name you may take either name or father's name, mother name, date of birth and uh, address, pin code, email, country, all these all you may take like a uh, variable names. And the data may change. If I take a name, any person name will come and uh, join and attach it there. If you are taking dynamic form, form name you are giving like text boxes, your entry name, entry text box you will give you know, in the HTML page. That page user may enter his own names, any name he may enter. That particular data item will come and inside and adding to this particular variable. Alright, so now see. Let's say simple like a text. Yes, this is plain text for testing. So if I print this, we will get this one. Let's see, I'm taking like a, this code of a statement echo and uh, txt. Yeah, save this and run it. Txt, save this and run it. Yes, this is the plain text we are getting. So two variables we are getting in an output. So how simple it is, the similar way if it is not text, what we need to do, if it is a number, you can directly, like on data types, you will learn all these things again and again. So number, if I am taking a new M or phone number or pin code, anything, directly you may pass the number over here. If it is a cell or a phone, if it is a phone number. Yeah, that equal to directly you may give the number, terminate it. There is a no quotes is not required. If you are passing something like a double quotes and single quotes, it will be treated as string data. If you are not, if it is a number, boolean and different types of data types are also there. We will discuss at a data types lecture, these are the things. And when we are getting an output, the variable, how we are accessing and reading the variable, same thing. 
by writing these variables by writing these variables we have to follow some guidelines which is initiated for all the programming languages not only php all the programming languages we have a certain set of rules see in php variable should starts with dollar sign i'll write here like a framing of the rules uh, rules to write variables right like uh, variable should starts with dollar sign right dollar sign or dollar symbol and uh, it should start it should be like a, it should be like a, a small a to z characters what are the characters to be there yes it is a restrictions are there capital a to z capital a to z comma 0 to 9 numbers and 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 underscore only eligible underscore only eligible to write the variable name this is very very important other than these like a special characters are not most uh, other than only underscore you you need not to write any special character inside the name of the variable okay and variable variable cannot start with number so number means if i am starting variable like uh, uh, two phone or three phone or first phone it's not uh, it's not eligible it will be it will throw you an error so if you want to make it phone one phone two phone three at the end you may put like phone one phone two phone three in this way okay variable cannot start with the number and very very important thing is very very important thing is like uh, here you will you will you may observe like uh, php variables are case sensitive case sensitive what would be the meaning see it's a name i have written all small characters if i am accessing like writing of echo echo dollar capital n a m e if i am written in this way by accessing of this variable something like um, uh, i have written some data here like uh, john so if i am writing all the small let small case letters in my variable name if i am accessing first letter is capital so it will it, it's not the same for this and this these are the two different type of variables so strongly remember python like a uh, PHP is an case sensitive programming language which case you are written here either small lower case letters or capital case letters you need to write the same case letters here while accessing of this variable otherwise it will throw you an error this is a very very important point every programmer should understand and know about this all right and uh, if you are written like uh, something like uh, here it is in a capital if you are accessing the with the first letter capital rest of the things are uh, small it will be okay and it will be accessible all right so this case whenever you are writing something either capital or lower case letters same case you try to practice to write all the variable names in your programming language all right I hope it's a very clear and a very easiest lecture for you. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are knowing about echo and print statements. This is a very important and a very simple differentiation also you will be known here. So earlier lecture we have seen once how to access a variable data and if we want to print something to in output we will use for echo echo keyword. 
so similarly print is also the same functionality will do what echo will operates so echo and print are more less the same they are both used to output data to the screen or output the functionality which the result set we are getting from the program so the differences are very small echo has more written values while uh, print has no written value so echo is having a written value and print has not while see here echo can be like uh, use like a multiple date like uh, information we can get in output whereas print statement the print keyword with the statement will accept only one argument only so most usefully and uh, meaningfully echo is fast rather than print so either one you wish to use in php programming language to get an output so first let's see an echo statement we have already seen echo statement whereas we'll see like a mode also here so here it is a name is defined with the variable of name some data value is assigned to this particular name so for this here uh, where i am going to writing something here is an echo statement whereas i am going to adding more like uh, html like uh, h2 tag also like to get something like a more uh, beautification of this particular name of the variable so how it is possible let's see so something right by, uh, by writing of uh, name and uh, shaker and here again so less than greater than h2 by running this save it let's see first uh, like uh, something is there in terminator yes it is there okay in between the strings are not required so in this way so the html echo statement is having html elements inside the echo statement that you need to observe in this program so reload so he search see h2 tag is applied for this particular name straight away i have written some name here the same thing is it possible to write is it possible to write for print yes let's see i'm changing the keyword with the echo to print so either parenthesis like a open and end parenthesis for this data this data may put open and end parenthesis or may not it will accept let's see save this this statement we are getting an output with the same output we'll get save it and reload see there is no change at all if i am refreshing the page so you need to understand either echo or print statement to write the information over here to get an accurate output all right now let's see by writing the print statement i'm going to adding something like uh, mm, more yes this name variable i'm going to writing to print yeah by writing of the syntaxes of both are same if i am applying a uh, double quotes here uh, concatenation it will be called like you need to put like a dot after the variable you need to put dot yes let's see now by making this concatenation over here and uh, by having an html data like a tags open tag and end tag of h2 this is the end tag okay so if i run this uh, i'll get an output in h2 tag only with the dynamic this parameter data this variable data so let's save it and run it same output we are getting if i am changing the name of the variable like a txt yes let's change the another variable this one save it and reload this is a plain text what the data is having here what the plain text we are getting in output so dynamic way which you want to get in output you will get over there yes let's see i am making step by step like a side by side these two things so awesomely you are getting over here how simple it is yes now let's see this is the data reload it we are getting this is the what we have written all right so 
try to practice with the more variables by making an addition of uh, by making of uh, addition of these uh, dynamic parameters you just write down and check it so if you want to apply like uh, um, something maybe echo or print dollar a would be like uh, some number of 5 dollar b that equal to number of 4 so dollar c or dollar total some addition like dollar a arithmetic operator dollar b okay so by making echo or print dollar t o t let's see like this output will get like directly straight away in the reloading this page why because this apache and all are by default running no just reload the page will get an output in 9 so we are getting directly the total output so if we want to make it something like uh, information over here uh, we need to write something and by pressing dot over here the total is concatenation we are doing concatenation inside and uh, something else yes save it and reload some text is also it's appearing here yeah format how the re report we require we accordingly we can plan it and uh, we'll see the output yes the total is 9 see total like uh, yeah, variable a value and the real v value is assigned here and the addition of these two we are storing in this particular total variable the tot variable we are printing here with along with the common text using the print statement for output either print or echo you can use it save it reload nothing will change same will be will get in output we strongly recommend wherever you require to use for echo which is a performance is greatly you will get accurate output if still require somewhere else like a print statement you, you try to apply yourself this is the major difference with this two I'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn data types in PHP. So every program is very important. Programming languages data types are very very important why it is important to handle in data in a segregation mode in strings integer float boolean array these are all different different uh, data types to making sure to handle in programming language so let's see variables can store the data we have seen in our previous lectures and these are the data what are the types are available and why so important in programming language also will be known so i'm creating a new file with like uh, data types in php save it and now i have to access the same file here data types dot php let's hit and enter empty page so here I am writing something like uh, ht yes ht and uh, data types so here within a body we have to initiate the PHP tags this code is not mandatory I told you many times so at beginning we are writing okay to handle like uh, HTML page with the CSS markups and all you may easily apply in your way so here if i write something like uh, uh, echo and equal to see inside here data types let's save it and reload the page yeah something oh sorry echo you are not getting equal to yes save it and reload so data types you are getting here so by writing the straight away this this echo statement you will get this output all right now php supports the following data types for strings and uh, string 
and uh, integer integer and uh, like uh, next one is uh, float float data type and uh, one more it is like a uh, boolean boolean data type and uh, array data type array is also it's one of the data like a uh, multiple data items are going to be storing in single variable we'll call it as arrays so here one by one in this lecture mostly a basic funda we'll see about a string arrays and uh, integer these are the things and a specific data type item wise we have a specified lectures are also there you will be known more details over there okay when you are saving something yes why it is getting like a, you know these are the lines uh, inside the php we shouldn't write so i'll making like a, these are the comment lines so we have in a lecture for comment lines also don't worry so save it and reload you are getting data types great now let's see very simple as we have seen like uh, something uh, some like a uh, name we have seen and uh, putting double quotes um, hello developer hello developer and terminate by writing the echo dollar name and terminate you will get hello developer in output it is in a string variable so here if i written something like uh, br tag it is a highly required here br tag save it reload hello developers this is in a string variable this is the line i have specified for breaking a line statement all right this is completely whenever using like a single or double quotes it will be treated as like uh, what we can call it as it's a string variable and in teaser anything which is going to be it's a non decimal and 0 to 9 number will be called as integer data type so integer must have an at least one digit one number not alphanumeric characters or any special characters it's a 0 to 9 at least one number and integer must have not decimal point if you are if decimal point is there it will be called as a decimal or floating point value so it can be without decimal without characters only 0 to 9 inside the numbers only when we are adding will be called as integer okay and uh, either it may be positive integer or negative integer any number you may treat it as an integer value only so let's say like uh, like a that equal to 2 2 2 3 2 3 2 3 3 4 and terminating there is a no single or double quotes over here yeah and uh, ends with the every php statement is ends with the like uh, echo dollar a yes we can read like a uh, two three three four yes two three three four directly it is coming and it will be treated as integer value let's check uh, whether it is an integer or not uh, we have in a where underscore dump method is there which it is which data type it is let's uh, check it first save it and reload the page yes it is saying like integer so if i am putting like uh, some break line after this yeah if i am putting some break line after this we'll see like uh, separately integer 2 3 3 4 how the data type also you will know what is the type of the data it is so here also name also you can check with that where dam you will be known very clearly which data type it is if you are adding something if you are adding something like uh, uh, let me take like uh, one break line over here yeah one break line here data types only we are knowing here very clearly so these two lines i'm taking as a copy and it's i'm treating it's in a b new variable name of the variable 23.34 23.34 either decimal or floating point value let's check it b 23.34 it will be printed here 23.34 it will be printing here anyhow let's check it whether it will be on which data type it is we'll check it dollar b yes where dump dollar b this is the dollar b is assigning floating point or decimal value so let's refresh it it's a float value it is saying that uh, php language 
all right php language is saying that it's a particularly like um, a floating point value good now we will look at boolean expressions boolean expression is nothing but either true or false that's it dollar x like a dollar a dollar b dollar c something you can take t r u e either true or false dollar y you may take false statement that's it either true or false will be treated in boolean expressions it will be like a conditional statements when we are writing either true or false statements will use for this boolean expressions very clearly in uh, more details so we'll see at uh, boolean expressions lectures okay and come to the point of uh, arrays so the data type is arrays are by making a single variable like uh, fruits that equal to array keyword to use and like uh, earlier we have a uh, given like a single item only like a single string only we have given for a variable we have a reading here we are getting an output that very clear so in arrays we'll use like uh, multiple items by making comma and uh, mango mango comma and uh, we'll put like a new variable which is called like a kiwi so on many like um, many fruit names we can add here n number of fruits and how we will get an output just simply echo dollar for you its fruits terminate print are also you may use uh, such a scenario yeah arrays are not converting into the string so in such case what we will do in such cases what we will do print print underscore r method is there and uh, this method to reading and uh, printing the reading and printing the array items let's see save it and reload wow see uh, we'll take like one break line over here otherwise it's uh, like uh, yes save it and reload so array of 0 1 2 how it is going and how it is we're treating as in a print we'll see like uh, in our arrays lecture so let me check that where drum of uh, this print data type Control C, Control V, save it, reload. So array of three and uh, three things are there. So let me take uh, one more break line over here. Save it, reload. Yeah, array of three items are there. Zero and uh, string characters and apple one. How many characters? Mango and uh, how many characters? Array positions and all we are getting here. More details we'll see at the RS lecture. Don't worry how to access and all we'll learn there. So these are the main important data types. In detailed, we are going to discussing in our upcoming lectures. So I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn PHP numbers. The data type which is very important, you should know about the numbers. And uh, if uh, you are receiving like a data like in string format, how you will convert and how you will handle such type of data types. We have in a built-in and ready-made conversion this string data type into integer. The possibilities are also there. Let's see very uh, like uh, initiating the things how it is possible like a uh, declaration of uh, php syntax directly i am php syntax i am writing in this particular example so by writing php open and end tag question mark and this that's it without html also it is possible to write the things let's begin something like uh, like a uh, number some number i am giving like a uh, 34 is my number so terminate the page print on echo dollar in new m is a variable name so save it and reload the page directly the number which is assigned to this variable we are directly accessing the number perfect so if i am given if i am given something like a 34 dot or something like a 23 save it let's see this also you will get it's a floating point number you will get 
So numbers, either a diesel or floating point number, you may use to apply uh, whenever you are writing like a something prices, any of the prices which are having 99.99 or any like $19.99 dollars. These are the numbers you may take like floating point number. Why these are the two important things? When you are applying like calculation, addition of products, sum of total rupees, these all are will applicable in using arithmetic operators. So using arithmetic operators is a very important to know with a specific data types only. All right. So these are the these are the things are very important when you are uh, dealing with the data items. Now we'll check it whether uh, this is the data type is a numeric or a float or something we'll check it first number we'll check it like uh, simply I'm write like where dump where dump this method I am inserting over here like uh, what I can say that yes inside I am using is numeric yes this here this variable I am making cut off here and this is the where means it's a variable let's save it and reload so boolean it is true is numeric yes it is a numeric it is a true is a result we are getting means it's a numeric data type if i am adding over here something like a, some point value let's check it so this is also like it's a numeric value only it is going like and it's throwing in a true of value perfectly so now Let's see if I want to like a uh, putting something double quotes surrounded the data which is the number and let's check is it numeric let's check it. So where dump is identifying it's a number only which is assigned inside the data it is saying very clearly. So most cases you may check it and observe whenever uh, we are dealing with this such type of data it will be treated as string data items string data items strongly remember and what you need to do if it is in a string yes it is possible to convert into casting method is also there how we will cast it how we will cast it if it is in a string data it's very simple and easy like uh, um, maybe int integer number int number that equal to what we need to do by writing int integer data type with the variable name like num if you are written in this way yeah if you are checking like where dump of dollar int underscore num yeah terminate the line and check this reload it see in teaser 34 it is going to be printing so this 34 like in teaser means there is a no floating values in teaser means there is a no floating values you won't get it so whenever you are converting into the float to in teaser you won't get after decimal point values these are very very important to know when you are converting your data into from one data type to another data type all right so integer is not having floating points so it's the eliminating after the decimal or period point values so you are getting only 34 is a getting in a casting it will be called like a data casting from one data type to another data type that is a float to string integer to string string to integer string to like um, float these are the conversions are possible to do see what you need to do here you need to write like a string and uh, float these things are possible to float these are the things are possible to replace over there and uh, play with the data all right this is about uh, very simple numbers in php in le next lecture we'll see about uh, booleans those are true false only we'll see thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn Boolean data types. So here, it's a very simple and uh, easy lecture. You are going to learn about the data types of a Boolean. So Boolean data type expressions are either true or false. Strongly remember, 
these are the two things only so test it's a t r u e true test it's a true if i given so let's check this echo dollar uh, test if we like uh, directly if we print this test directly we will get true only let's save it and check with the output see one yes it is true if it is false yes if it is false we'll get zero save it f a l s e correct save it and reload so nothing we are getting so f a l s e false is correct so even even if it is true it is saying something and if it is false it's showing something like a nothing em empty it is showing an empty so let me check this data type in var dum uh, by putting terminator and a dollar test let me check this save it and it's a c boolean true it is showing so here if i want to get in like uh, another way of uh, getting uh, this uh, line space like by making double quotes and by putting n so terminating here and it will be go into the next line so this is not comma this is period save it reload now it's not taking save this so why the test dot double quotes slash n echo we are using yeah okay so if we want to putting like a something like a break line it's a highly possible save it reload it making terminate few of the browsers and uh, few of the functionalities of uh, php versions maybe accept a few of the options yes this is a very common you need not to panic just simply check it which one will works there according to you need to apply and you need to go over there okay so now we are seeing like a boolean expression of true we are able to see if i am making false let's see only when the data have changed so boolean expression of false it is showing so true either true or false expressions like these are will be called as scalar data types scalar data types in programming php programming language a boolean data can be either true or false what we have seen here there are a predefined con like a constants in php the variable becomes a boolean variable written either true or false is assigned to a variable to understand yes it is a it's making it's a true objective or a false objective and also further like making more using operators in logical operators and comparison operators we'll see more about these true false statements all right we we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn php arrays so what are arrays and uh, how we are going to using these arrays we are learning here so i am creating arrays.php file to initiating a php based array program so here by writing and in syntax of uh, php open and closing tags here i have written and uh, the name of the file a r r a y s arrays so here i am initiating the file access in the right side window in the output so let's see very simply i'll write so what are arrays arrays stores multiple values in one single variable what is the purpose of this array is initiated for the purpose only so here a special variables which are uh, maybe like uh, holding information of multiple data items into a single variable it may be the different type of data types maybe string integer boolean or uh, any other data types also can be possible to assign into a single variable so how great it is let's an example if you are having three fruits or 300 fruits how you can go to assign a single variables variable 1 2 3 4 so on how you will assign the variables of for 300 in such case we are uh, introduced 
in programming language arrays so let's see by making an array is very simple and easy to write in arrays and accessing of this array parameters are also very simple let's see one by one okay let's uh, taking of uh, fruits yeah and uh, a keyword which is called array of in multiple items we can add here like uh, apple comma comma based kiwi another fruit and uh, making in a comma and um, papaya and uh, mango and like I mean geo mango any data type and I'm making like a strings to understand easiest way purpose and any of uh, group of uh, data like maybe numbers or strings any data you may use and write here all right so here let's check by making an output I like the fruits I like and I'm going to making like a concatenation of these fruits how dollar f r u i t s fruits of zero fruits of zero and making terminate let's check it first just run the simple example I like uh, yeah there is a space is required here I like apple I like is in a plain text I have given inside the program so concatenation with this by putting the dot and this variable of zero means this item is going to be printing see let's see it's an apple if I am placing like a, instead of zero if I am making one we'll get in a kiwi kiwi so reload kiwi how great it is so index is always starts from zero array index is starting from zero so it will be called as index position so whenever you want to use array index position you need what you need to do you need to add something like uh, array positions to read the items so one more array item I'm going to uh, like uh, concatenating here so what I need to do take a copy of this and paste over here like uh, let's see it is an uh, uh, like it is a array index position one I am giving so let's see save see first one is zero it's an apple and the second one array index position one it is a kiwi zero one two three in this way array items are going to be reading one by one so the two items are given like i like apple and kiwi it's not a specific order any order you may give based on your index position based on your index position number this item is going to be representing in our output okay based on the requirement of array input it will giving you an output so here if you want to know how many items are there inside in this array like uh, this array fruits array we have given something now so let's see echo and making something else like uh, using a full break line terminate echo count is in a built-in method is there C O U N T count is in a built in method which is readily available to identify what the array items are available. See how many array items are there at present we are counting 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's check with this method. Just reload the page, save it, and reload. See 4 items. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4. If in array index position 0 1 2 3 these are the things are there inside the array if I am adding one more item in this particular array like a save it and paste um, pine save it reload the page 5 automatically count is increased automatically increase the count number so in this way we can find the length of array sorting of the array and these are the things are also possible in array items in upcoming lectures we'll see more examples in this array also we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture, you are going to learn multi-dimensional array. Earlier, we have seen a single array with the items of index positions. We have learned very clearly. Now, 
we will try to extend this lecture to multi dimension array so how simply we are going to creating multi dimensional array we'll see here see an array it is uh, declared here so in this array we will create multiple arrays so how these arrays will be created here uh, array and uh, open sorry open and end parenthesis and make sure to make it comma so each fruit i am specifying each fruit i am specifying some prices so it may be like uh, 20 fruits or uh, some price i am giving here all right in this way an array item is having like a uh, four fruits we have given four items two three four so one is a uh, apple and another one is a uh, kiwi another one is mango and pineapple okay so these are the items i have added the rest of uh, this data yeah this data we can remove okay so in this way we are uh, defining so this one i am putting some 10 any number you may put your wish changing of the data okay 60 and uh, 3 2 and uh, 4 2 whatever it the prices are changes i am adding here okay last one we need not require any comma so the multi-dimensional array we have a given an array inside more array items are added here that's really awesome and great now what i am trying to doing here how to read this array then earlier we have using like a, with the help of uh, array index position we have reading very clearly so how to read this multi-dimensional array so mult dimensional arrays so how it is possible to read all these things let's check using loop statement it is possible to read all these things just i am writing whenever we are writing and entering into the loop statement you will be get an, a great idea so just just uh, simply i am straight away i am writing something like uh, a loop statement okay row initiating f0 terminate and uh, dollar row like uh, less than four items are there if it is more we can put more items row plus plus on every row it is going to be incrementing and the decrementing things will happen so here okay so echo what the things like uh, open and end things it's a paragraph is initiating and uh, bold tag is going to be initiating row number and paragraph and uh, what's the b tag is closed and uh, paragraph p tag is closed and line terminator yes clear now echo we are making like a, what is that a tag is a ul tag ul tag is nothing but ul tag is nothing but uh, where we can use for uh, un like uh, unordered list okay and one more inside one more loop statement which is uh, using for instead of row here i am using column so inside the for so all rows are column as column any variable name you may take here like a for loop statements you will know everything you will know everything of these things like three by i am given in a row three columns are there pine two three three columns so i am giving here it is three okay for this open and end parenthesis and here an echo statement is uh, what is the echo statement we can put like uh, list item html tag of uh, list item and a concatenation with a dollar fruits dollar fruits of dollar row this is very very important mark dollar column and stop with uh, forward slash list item forward slash list item is closed and terminate so unordered list also we have initiated here now so we need to close the unordered list with end tag so save it 
and let's see by running this let's see reload the page awesomely we are getting row number row number row number apple each independent item kiwi mango pineapple everything we are getting see on each row each row if i am adding any title over here we'll get like uh, if it is in a group of reports especially strongly remember when you are dealing with the multi dimensional arrays when you are seeing of uh, demos of uh, what we can say that um, rows and columns printing in your uh, reports this is very very important see first row it is uh, going to be uh, reading of uh, first loop a loop inside another loop it is a inner loop concept it is implemented to handling multi dimensional array on each row it will be treated as it will be prints on only row number and inside the row three items are there it will be read inside the loop so three kiwi 30 60 and mango m a n g o m a n g o mango it is a three items pine it is three items same way it is going to be continue one by one put your own data and try to practice with your own examples we'll see what the outputs okay we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn array sorting so how we are going to sorting an array we'll see in this lecture so very simply i'm taking fruits as an item array of inside like a uh, apple and uh, mango multiple items i'm going to taking over here all right and uh, two more items will add like uh, banana we can add and uh, kv we can add okay so at the end of the line of a code statement we need to make it uh, terminator so by reading this as we know very clearly how to like um, make sure to sort it now very simply by seeing something how we can apply of uh, this uh, sorting technique let's see very simply we'll see like uh, my by making a simple ready made method of sort see this method and array so this method when we are implementing here and fruits by writing this way we can sort the arrays very simply we can sort it so how is it uh, sorting or not just uh, we can't get any output why because it's uh, not uh, going to displaying anything so print underscore r by using this method you can make make sure to see the output of fruits let's see save it and reload wow apple banana kiwi mango so here it is apple mango banana kiwi is here and by seeing the output you may see like array of index position 0 is apple 1 is banana and 2 is kiwi and 3 is mango last one so the sorting technique is applied here and it's making like alphabetical order wise it is sorting so instead of uh, this fruits also we may check with the number like a 2 comma 3 comma 4 and a 9 and uh, let's uh, at the beginning we can put something like 8 comma okay 8 comma yeah 88 no problem save it and reload the page see 2 3 4 9 88 so hope the sorting is done with the numbers either number or string anything you may use to sort your array items if you need to present it in your data so very simply using sort sort method is a built in ready madely available so using to making like a ascending order so similarly there is an r sort is also there r sort is also there which is a quite opposite descending order descending order sort and assort like r sort both are like a a position of uh, these two things sort makes ascending order or sort will makes descending order of the data items which are available inside the array i hope it's very simple and easy lecture 
we'll catch you in the next one thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn php constants constants are like a variables except that once they are defining they cannot be changed or modified in entire the program so constants are like an identifiers how we are using like variables in simple way in php we can define constant also and it cannot be the value cannot be changed during the script running unless until uh, if you want to make it change you can change in the program in a script while writing on running of the program it cannot so the valid constant name like a constant name should start with a letter or underscore no in dollar sign so let's see constant name like a uh, names are uh, how we are going to be writing so here it's a very important note like a uh, Uh, constants are automatically global access entire the script anywhere you may access directly this constant variables so let's see using the define function we are going to we are going to like a uh, define using this define function we can going to defining the uh, this constant informations so name with the value what is the constant name and what are the value we need to present if we are going to be accessing this constant uh, variable so the parameter name should be specify the name of the content and the value what are the value we want to present like uh, presented case sensitive and case insensitive these all are also by like uh, we'll see one by one in step of process so let's see i'm going to defining one constant like uh, my constant name is uh, greetings so what are the value i need to write here uh, welcome to hari systems so here this is the constant variable and this is the value i am going to presenting here terminate and if i want to access what i'll access this see this greetings i am going to accessing okay just terminate it save it reload the page what i am getting what the data item like a value which is assigned to this particular greetings constant that item the value we are getting in output when i am reading greetings correct so by default these all like a uh, false in case insensitive so if i am changing like a small greetings uh, let's check what happens first save it and reload so use of undefined constant greetings assume that greetings will throw an error so it's a strongly remember it's a case sensitive and unless if you want to get even in a, like a output what you need to do the simply like a by simply make it like a true okay so true so this is the you are strongly remember that uh, it's a case sensitive with the capital letter if we are written so the capital letters only we need to access this constant variable and if you are making it's a true here to making like a casing sensitive now let's see uh, if we see like this way we are getting anyhow it's a output let me check readings in case sensitive check it reload the page yes once if it is true it will be accept your pair like a variable case insensitive name also all about to writing a defining these variables in true when like a where and when we are writing these constant variables like month names which are not going to be changing entire life cycle of the project week names month names or area names districts countries these all we can put in constant names only in php 7 onwards you are getting this define function a constant using define function which is initiated from latest versions of php 7 onwards if they are 5.5 6 these are the versions are not having this particular function all right constants are very global anywhere you can directly call the constant name as a variable and you can access it i hope it's very simple and easy lecture 
we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about strings so creating a page strings.php hitting and enter and making php tags yes here we need to write like php so now hitting and enter so the strings here in output also we need to accept strings.php yes it's ready so accessing of the strings are very very simple by putting something like name double quotes inside hello i am php some data i am added here so by putting like echo accessing of this name and terminating of the line we will get simply this string variable in output so let's see strings are using to present the data the text type or any other description type of data all you need to know the string will be treated in php with the double quotes which are surrounded with the text so if we are using understanding of a very clearly when we are treating data in a string means it will be like text so with this text by applying of arithmetic operator will it be applicable no so whenever you are treating as an a text should be on text only so let's see i'm going to like uh, assigning something a simple uh, something like uh, uh, it may be like either single quote or double quote also you may take as a string there's no doubt at all so if i'm treating if i'm treating something like uh, echo here we go yeah b r tag to breaking and uh, something dollar a that equal to some number i am taken so terminator and dollar b i am taking as in a uh, five terminator dollar uh, total or dollar c as a total of uh, dollar a plus dollar b with the termination echo dollar c just see what happens now reload seven result we are getting the total total of a sum yes putting double quotes we need to write yes just a second the total okay the total by putting dot so let's check it save this and reload the total seven the total sum or whatever it the matter you may put so what happening here a with the sum value b with the sum value here i am putting like a variable plus using arithmetic operator b value which is going to be storing into c and we are getting output perfect now let's see putting it's a number to i'm making a string now save this and check it see when check this so it should come and it will be treated to be like a not in a numbers it should be treated as in a string variable but uh, something is here it is applying like uh, most of the browsers it won't most of the functionality it won't it will be treated as a uh, concatenation things will happens so strongly remember something it's uh, happening in this uh, particular area it will be treated as a string and it will be printed as 25 it will shows so in real time program when you are writing you strongly remember when you are treating in arithmetic operator what you need to do you have to take as in a number it's not in string that i want to express you here all right we'll catch you in the next example thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn like a uh, string formatting how to make string formatting means concatenating with the dynamic variables how simple it is to making a dynamic story or dynamic letter writing or anything any dynamic report if you want to create using string 
with the variables it's very easy and super easy so let's see just simply a name of the student i'm taking it's like a john and uh, the another one course he is he may interested in like uh, php okay so php and uh, another one the year he is uh, going to be applying for uh, like uh, i may take it's in a 2022 so now let's see i'm just i want to make it in a print in a story how it is important and how it is easy uh, the course is completed this is to certified this is to certified uh, certify that yeah see the student is completed john is completed bhp course in 2022 if other than john and maybe course is different and year may be different the data parameters are maybe changed but my construction of the statement is a uh, fixed this is called it's in a string formatting how we are making a common formatting for any data report how it is possible yes by making concatenation of all these things my my job is over so how it is like a line terminator like a breaking of a line terminator i'm making here and uh, putting dot uh, name first variable dot and putting double quotes uh, double quotes Mm, here again putting dot dot inside dollar c o u r s course and uh, again uh, mm, in the year of in the year of putting double quotes dot dot inside we need to put like uh, y e a r year okay anyhow we have in a terminator of these two lines let me check if any corrections are required oh pass in like it is a getting an error so what i need to do now let's uh, remove this in let me check now unexpected things are happening let me check this concatenation only maybe something may have an uh, errors like uh, see here it is uh, something it is throwing like uh, error why one more quote is there is learning in yeah save this and reload still it is getting another yeah save it wow so see this is the statement yes it's a visible now uh, yeah it's a visible now it is a, this is to certify that one part is completed now i'm going to assigning like a concatenating this string with the name is learning another concatenation of the course the course is concatenated here with the dynamic uh, text like a dynamic variable and another one is here it is going to be concatenating with the here it is an this is to certify that john yeah formatting also making a good view john is uh, what is this is yeah save it learning php in 2022 that's really awesome now what i am trying to doing here uh, something like uh, mary is uh, learning python data science in 2022 save it only data item i have changed and saved the document just reload it so mary is changed course name is python data science is changed everything is changing if we are adding like a changing the data of uh, this thing it will be also change so accordingly what the parameters you want to put here and making a dynamic story and if you want to make leave letter yes common leave letter you may put and changing of the student name admission name year these things you may make it change of the dynamic data variables and putting together here and making common print of all the statements if you need date time everything you can add in the this formatting so I hope it is very simple and easy lecture. Make sure to prepare more examples. We will catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. 
in this lecture you are going to learn string methods what are the methods and why we require to learn these methods yes these are very important to know about the methods and all so like uh, what happens when you are using methods these methods are readily available built in the functionality of this method is readily available in php so by knowing and applying of this method you will get in a great experience and you will integrate or add these methods to complete a great uh, like a problem statements so let's see to knowing a length of a string how you need to do you need to write some program to verifying or to making like understanding of the validations many things many uh, scenarios you need uh, this such a uh, built in methods so let's see an example hello world is there some name is assigned to this particular area so if i want to know if i want to know how many characters are there in this particular variable so let's see str length str l e n yes string length and string string what is the string name is my string so let me check this how many characters are there if it is a small characters only we can check it if it is big how how it is possible to check it see the 11 characters are there inside the hello world i am the php developer so what is the helpful of this see the 22 characters are there inside the this particular string so by knowing str len method you will get how many characters are there with the given string very easily all right now uh, another one is like uh, like method ready madely available that method we need to call it and adding this variable that's it we'll get the solution uh, str underscore word underscore count so here it's an, another method so let's check it str underscore word underscore count means how many words are there inside the given string so reload it so one two three four five words are there straight away it is giving the words count how beauty it is very simply we are getting the count of the words and one more method i'm going to applying here which is the reverse string str r e v reverse string see it is there uh, our pycharm like uh, the sublime text editor is uh, referring all the which are available built in methods are in php supports so understanding see i a m like a i am the php developer all the string is this string is reversely it is printing with the help of str rev method how simple it is whenever you need to print a reverse case of uh, any string or data just simply apply this uh, str rev method need not to worry about it so simply you can all right and uh, we'll see like uh, there is an um, lower case and upper case letters yes str to lower str to lower yes it is there this one and uh, this string variable we need to pass all the lower case letters only we'll see in the output if it is uh, present at the capital letters also we'll see at the output in the lower case letters case sensitive if it is a str to upper str to upper yeah here it is a method so we need to pass this variable dynamic way so save it and reload all the capital letters you see when it is important applying of this uh, uh, string to upper and string to lower methods yes somewhere else in the report most cases if you want to make sure to print a names or country names if you want to put like a print in a capital letters only you need to apply in this methods directly otherwise user may enter capital letters or small letters you don't know how the data you received so by applying these methods you simply achieve, achieve you simply achieve the solutions of this particular uh, informations okay so strongly remember these are very easy and very simple methods you are going to be applying and uh, trim l trim and r trim and trim 
these are also very very important trim method is used to like uh, uh, like eliminating the space around surrounded the string trim is both either left or right if any unwanted space is there whenever something if i am uh, entering like i am the developer there is a lot of space i am sending to the database which is uh, entered into the database if it is the characters are very less it won't accept so we need to make sure to trim the variable to avoid unwanted spaces either front and back Mean, means like a surrounded the string all right and uh, l trim especially the l trim is an a method is there to making like a left side it will only trims and r trim is also there r trim like a, to avoid the only right side if an unwanted space is there in such cases you may use either trim l trim or or trim methods to avoid unwanted spaces if any in surrounding of the string okay and uh, i would like to explain you one more uh, great uh, built in method that is substring substring why so it is important means substring is will be making you like uh, making cut off uh, a data from the given string what parameters you need to get in the output you will get from the uh, using this substring substring you need to pass the zero to some like positions you have to pass to the substring uh, this is a very very important from the data if it is something like a day month year would be there you need only year what is the year you need to get in output you just make it substring from that date string and you will get the only year to validate this application is valid for this year or not this is very very important in real world okay so make sure to uh, apply these methods you will get an, a great experience more methods we are going to be explaining in more detail lectures are available you don't worry about it we'll explain more uh, methods in streams i'll catch you soon thank you Hello everyone. Welcome here. Here is a simple coding exercise for you. It's very simple. But I am giving here, which is a based on your previous lectures. So most of the students, I may think it like uh, you will simply crack it. So let's try in your local environment how you are practicing your code by writing and making the syntaxes and all. So let's see. A simple statement: Data is given. Hello world. With the capital and small letters, I have given. my output should be this particular data you need to assign a variable and you need to present this data in output of all small case letters and all capital letters two things which are strings built in methods we have applied some methods to getting in such case so try to write in your examples and show me be ready with your output anyhow next lecture i am giving you in a solution for this See you at that place. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome here. Here is your solution for coding exercise. So all you need to do is create a file in PHP with the extension, and I have to, uh, I have told you like a required output of all small case letters and capital letters. So inside the PHP, what you need to do is str to lower method by applying and hello world you need to write inside there. Or else you take in a variable, assign the data, and that variable you need to uh, like add inside the string lower and string to upper methods. By writing in this way inside the PHP code. you will get in a output in this format you just write down and test yourself here is your great solution for this i hope most of the students are very simply like uh, uh, did this example if not you write down open your system open any of your code editor create a php file and start writing these lines of statements in upcoming lectures you need to practice all the lectures very well then you will be fit as a php developer 
Thank you.